Yes, Pat, just want to let you know we have a quadruple header of college football action on ESPN. And coming up next is Will Muschamp and South Carolina. They'll be taking on the Wolfpack of NC State kickoff just about 23 minutes from now. Great college football coming up. And also for South Carolina, Jake Bentley is a quarterback started the last seven games of 2016 as a freshman. We'll be facing NC State. That game under 20 away here on ESPN. That's right, Beth. Just want to let you know that Ryan Finley passed for 3,059 yards last season, the sixth highest single season total in NC State history. He and NC State facing South Carolina. Ten minutes from now, it'll be on ESPN News, the ESPN app. Welcome to the 2017 Belt College kickoff presented by PlayStation View. The ACC meets the SEC in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium, South Carolina. A team that is one of the most improved in the SEC, taking on NC State, a popular dark horse pick in the ACC. And welcome to the booth with Greg McElroy. I'm Dave Pash, Tom Luganville in a bit. Obviously, tonight is a game everybody's talking about, Mac, with Florida State and Alabama. But this is a game that's under the radar because you've got a team many have picked to make the college football playoff. And then South Carolina, which will not be an easy out this year. Yeah, there's no doubt. These teams have really improved, starting with South Carolina. Offensively, they saved their best performance for last. Will Muschamp now going into his second season. You can expect this group to really be improved, not only on the offensive side of the ball, but on the defensive side of the ball. So, Tom, they're going to have their hands full, however, going up against what Dave said, a dark horse in the ACC. Uh, there's no question, Greg. Hey, listen, expectations are at an all-time high for NC State. Two things have to happen. they got to beat the teams they're supposed to, and they've got to beat somebody maybe they're not expected to. The test starts today with South Carolina. We'll find out if the expectations are real. You talked about it, Lukes. Lost to East Carolina last year in Boston College. And then Kyle Bambard missed that short field goal at the end of the game in Clemson. If NC State beats Clemson, maybe the Tigers don't even play in the college football playoff. And then Florida State, there was a dropped interception. We thought we were going to kick off just a moment ago, but we're being told that the headsets for South Carolina are not working. They're trying to get that ironed out here at Bank of America Stadium so we can kick off. And if those headsets are not working, that would mean that NC State then would have to shut off their headsets, but Will Muschamp has it on, so perhaps they've got it ironed out. And now we're told both headsets are down for now. South Carolina won the toss, elected to receive Debo Samuel. A name to remember this year. This is a dangerous weapon for South Carolina in the return game, as well as on offense. Toe meets leather here in Charlotte. Samuel on the three yard line. And Samuel is free past the 30 yard line. Samuel might go. What a way to start the season. 97-yard touchdown. Debo Samuel, one of the most dangerous players in the SEC, just took the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. 97 yards. Welcome back, college football. We missed you. We love you. And Debo Samuel with a great way to start this one. For the Gamecocks. He just got done before that kickoff talking about how NC State is a popular dark horse pick this year. Not the start they envisioned. Penalty marker down. False start. Offense number 51. Five yard penalty. Try. Corey Helms right guard moved. Boy, if Debo Samuel can stay healthy, he missed a lot of time the last couple of years with hamstring problems. He is a weapon in the return game as we just witnessed and also as a wide receiver. Seven nothing South Carolina 13 seconds in. Here's how it happened just moments ago. Talk about getting the season off. To an incredible start, Debo Samuel. Welcome back, my friend. Touched just twice, three times there. Only the kicker to beat. 
And he was off to the races. In the open field, nobody's touching Debo Samuel. Just a great job setting up his blocks, slipping inside the two would-be tacklers, getting to the perimeter, and going the distance. Tom, what a start. Guys, yeah, I mean, I'm coming down and I'm running down the sideline watching him go. And it's been a long time since we've seen that type of explosiveness from a perimeter player in South Carolina. And Dave, you mentioned the health. The health of this football team for South Carolina overall, it's only week one. They got to keep their playmakers healthy. They're only at 75 scholarship players right now for South Carolina. So their best players got to stay on the field. And what a great start. This sideline erupted. Will Muschamp, headsets flying all over the place. Coaches tripping all over each other. Fantastic stuff. Second year for Will Muschamp. They doubled their win total from two years ago at the end of the Steve Spurrier era as he resigned and Sean Elliott took over as the interim coach. Parker White kicking off now. Will we get a return for NC State? Nope. The win helped that a little bit. So the touchback NC State will start in the 25. The quarterback for the Wolfpack is graduate transfer Ryan Finley. is from Phoenix, Arizona. He started out on the West Coast at Boise State. He graduated from there in three years. Joined NC State in June of last year. It took him a while to get to know his teammates and ingratiate himself to the coaching staff. But he ended up being the starter last year, beating out a team favorite in Jalen McClendon. He led NC State to a 7 and 6 record, but they had a couple of bad losses. East Carolina, Boston College, they should have defeated Clemson, missed field goal at the end, and they also had a chance to knock off Florida State. And they're a team that a lot of people like to contend in the ACC here in 2017. Naheem Hines gets the call on first down, not much, maybe two. We mentioned Ryan Finley was at Boise State. He was there with offensive coordinator Eli Drinkwitz. Then both came to Raleigh last year. Drinkwitz coached him from the sideline last year, but he told us that he gets so emotional yelling at Ryan Finley that he said he's got to take himself away from it and go upstairs in the booth this year and talk to him on the phone. Finley wide open in the middle of the field is Kelvin Harmon, a first down past the 40. Ryan Finley needed to make sure that he won the locker room and he had a tough time doing that arriving in June of last year going through a quarterback competition and then trying to lead this team throughout the regular season. Now he's had 14 months to get to know his teammates. His teammates looked at him and they said you know what? you're a package deal with our new OC. I'm not sure how I feel about this because we love this kid McClendon who's been competing here for the last couple years so he's really won the locker room this year. And Finley has another open receiver, but the pass is dropped by Jalen Samuels. Well, one of the ways that Finley tried to get involved with the guys last year, be one of the guys get to know him, is go out for sushi, something that he wasn't used to. So he went out, took his offensive lineman out for dinner, and they said, you like guacamole? Yeah. He said, absolutely. So here, try guacamole on sushi. They put a big chunk of guacamole on there. He took a bite out of it and realized it was wasabi. A little different taste, Dave. A little different taste. Penalty yeah, marker down. Of the game. Yeah, that's not nice. I understand <laughs> offensive linemen, they're prone to give the quarterback a tough time and vice versa, believe me. But as you know, Greg, you, you can't complain about that, right? You got to just suck no, it up. No, you have to wear it. it. Yeah, it, it, eyes watering, wanting to cry. That's part of being a football player. Eating wasabi is not one of the prerequisites to playing football at a high level, Tom. You know this. First of all, why did he think that guacamole would be at a sushi restaurant beyond me? Hines on the carry gets stood off, no gain. As Sky Moore with the hit. And boy, that must feel good for Sky Moore. Missed last year with a neck injury. Led South Carolina in tackles each of his first three seasons before missing 2016. He's Third. a huge piece. He's fast. He can play sideline to sideline. And he's really a professional with the way he prepares. So for this young South Carolina team, Watching him work on a daily basis has been invaluable as they try to approach this season. Finley on third down and nine. And the catch is made for a first down by Jalen Samuels. He is Finley's go-to guy. And it's a gain of 12. 
nice throw from Finley looking to his left getting back over the middle finding his second receiver who's sitting up and posted puts it on him for a completion. That pass deflected. Not sure which receiver it was intended for, Jacoby Myers or Stephon Lewis. And Greg, on that last throw to uh, Samuels, if you notice the defender, Jemias Williams, the true freshman, he's starting at nickel for South Carolina. Highly recruited guy last year, a huge need position for South Carolina. It is imperative that number 21 identifies where number one on offense is aligned at all times. Here's Ryan Gillespie trying to turn it back inside and he gets spilled. DJ Wanham with the play. This is the second time on this drive where we've seen NC State in third and long. Now this South Carolina defense is not great when it comes to rushing the passer. That's been a real point of emphasis as they've headed into this season. But you have to avoid situations like this because this South Carolina team is opportunistic and will mess with the quarterback's eyes in coverage. They just converted third and nine. Here's third and 11. It's a screen pass to Hines. And he's able to break a tackle and turn on the Jets. Out of bounds, close to a first down. Knocked out by Chris Lamonts. He is short. We'll see if NC State goes for it here on fourth down and two. Hines is one of the fastest players in the country. If he gets outside, look out. Great call by Elia Drinkwitz there. South Carolina in a pressure look, throwing a screen and give him some green grass. Now they're thinking about it at least to go on fourth down. And with the offense staying out there, it appears as though it's going to be Ryan Finley and his Wolfpack teammates giving this one a shot. I like this. I do too. Show confidence in your offense on the first here. Play fake. Finley got Samuels. And Samuels able to get the first down. D.J. Smith was too late getting out there, and it's a move the chain situation for the pack. Fourth and short, full flow going to the left. You sneak your most versatile weapon out back to the right. Nice, safe, easy completion to keep the drive alive. Well executed by the quarterback, Finley, and by the do-it-all stud, Jalen Samuels. I like the call by Dave Dorn in his fifth season as the NC State head coach. Here's Hines out of the backfield and tripped up. Otherwise, he might have gone. D.J. Smith got him, and you could see by Hines' reaction, he knew it, that if he broke that tackle, he's taking it to the house. What a good throw by Finley here, putting it right on Hines' face mask because Smith was trying to go over the top. He had to hold him up just a little bit, but, man, when he turns on the Jets, it's over for Hines. There was some movement. Penalty marker down. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, six to seven, five yard penalty, first down. SEC officiating crew today. Naheem Hines, an All American track performer on the 4x100 relay team and first team All ACC in the 100 meter. His twin sister is a hurdler on the NC State track team. He played primarily in the slot last year and was very productive. But when Matt Days, the senior running back, departed, they had a big void in the backfield. They said, let's put our most explosive player there and see what happens. It's worked out well so far. Samuels collecting the pitch inside the 20-yard line, down near the 16. No, there was so much made, guys, of Matt Days departing for this offense and the production he had over his career, but I'm not so sure with the back by committee that NC State won't actually be more explosive, more versatile, with Gillespie and Hines, who gives them a speed option in the backfield that they have not had the last three or four years. Little higher risk, higher reward. These yep. guys aren't necessarily as consistent as Days, but their ceiling is every bit, if not considerably higher. Second and six, they run Hines off the right side. Hines powering his way past the 10 yard line, getting the first down. We are watching Hines down in the field now. He, he's not the tallest guy in the world, 5'9", but he's powerful, 200 pounds. Watch here. It is fall forward. I guess when you're running that fast and that hard and your legs are that strong, 
You have no choice but to fall forward, Dave. He may be short, but he's not small by any means. No, he is not. He's well put together. And a great answer here by NC State after the big kickoff return that got South Carolina up early. It was a heck of a drive by the Wolfpack offense. And it's a first and goal. Just inside the 10-yard line. That's Samuels in motion. He'll hand it to Gillespie, the first guy through. Stood up at the six by T.J. Brunson, South Carolina's middle linebacker. So a gain of about three on the play. No, Greg, we, we talked about how far along South Carolina's come on offense, but defensively, this is exactly what they need to avoid. They don't have the depth and the manpower to hold up and consistently be able to sustain drives like this on defense. They're going to have to get off the field. No question. Play number 14 coming up right now. A nice balance in the early going for the Wolf Pack. Six rushes, seven passes. On second and goal. It's going to be Finley keeping South Carolina. Never expected that. Touchdown pack. He only had one rushing touchdown all of last year. And he scores NC State's first touchdown of 2017. You're a quarterback and you pull it on the six yard line in the zone read principle. You better score. Nice read right there by Ryan Finley. Carson Wise is the place kicker. We mentioned the name of Kyle Bambard earlier. He missed that kick against. Clemson last year that would have won the game and probably knocked Clemson out of the national championship picture. Carson Wise beat out Bambard for the kicking duties and this is his first attempt and he ties the game at seven. Ryan hit Finley had a few goals this offseason. One was to bulk up. Want to know why? Because he wanted to become a better runner. One carry, one touchdown. Pack. ESPN app's a great place to have at a stadium. So you can sit there, check not only all the scores from the games, but watch a lot of the other games as you're watching this. And if you're just joining us, you missed a lot. South Carolina on the opening kickoff, Debo Samuel goes 97 yards for a touchdown. Then NC State with that lengthy possession, able to counter punch to even things up. Now let's see if NC State kicks it to Samuel here. Now they kick it away from him, and it's fielded at the two yard line. And out to the 20 is A.J. Turner. NC State will take that. That's a win for the Wolfpack. We'll see Jake Bentley for the first time when we come back. ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation View. Watch the biggest moments in sports. Try it free today. And in part by Heineken. Open your world. Enjoy responsibly. Atmosphere a lot like a bowl game here in Charlotte this week. And you have two schools within driving distance. South Carolina less than two hours. NC State about two and a half hours. And over 50,000 here at Bank of America Stadium for South Carolina. NC State we're tied at seven. Incredible day of college football today culminating in the first ever one versus three matchup to start a regular season. Bama FSU tonight from Atlanta. Bradley Chubb terrific play the All-American takes down Rico Dowdle and the ball may have come out. A rule that Dowdle was down. But as a quarterback, it's tough to start behind the chain. Second and 11 for Jake Bentley, the sophomore quarterback. You look at the numbers for Bradley Chubb, one of the best defensive players in the country. Two-time captain as well. Here's a wide receiver screen to Samuel, past the 25-yard line. So a game of about eight on the play. It's a family affair with the Bentleys. Jake a sophomore from Alabama skipped his senior year of high school and enrolled last year. They were going to redshirt him, but midseason they decided to pull a redshirt and start him. His brothers have played college football. And his dad is on the South Carolina staff as a coach. And Bentley is a talent. There's his dad, Bobby, the running backs coach. 
Jake played for his dad in high school. And a big third and three for Bentley. NC State bringing pressure. And the pass on target. And a first down and more. True freshman Shai Smith out to the 37-yard line. There's a shot of Jake, his brothers, and his dad. It's going to be cool, man, to play for your father in high school and then go to college and know that your dad is there for any conversation you want to have. Not just talking about football, but talking about life. But it's difficult for his dad, Bobby Bentley, because he's the running back coach, and he says he has to resist the urge to coach him every single snap. He's got to focus on his guys. It's very natural to coach your son when he is such a good quarterback. Bentley's pass off the mark, incomplete. Let's go to the studio and say good afternoon to Adnan Burke. Hey, buddy. What is going on, Dave Pass? Championship Drive update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. So Ty Pegram out from Maryland, the true freshman out of D.C., Kasim Hill in, and the Terps lead the Longhorns by 10 in Tom Herman's debut. Dave, back to you. That'd be a shocker, huh? All the hype about Tom Herman if Texas loses that game. Yeah, and the coverage certainly wasn't bare when he got there. Charlie Strong did a good job recruiting. I don't think anyone expected this type of performance. South Carolina second and ten from its 37. And Bentley's pass is caught by Brian Edwards. It's about a handful on the play. No, Greg, uh, Jake Bentley, I remember when he came out of high school and he was one of the first invites we had to the Under Armour All-America game. And he calls me in June out of nowhere and he says, Hey, coach, listen, I'm not going to be able to play in the game. And I said, well, why? He goes, well, I'm enrolling early. I said, well, we have lots of guys that play in the game and then just enroll in January after. And he goes, no, 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 I'm enrolling now. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, how are you going to play your senior year? I'm not. Last year was his senior year. He turned 19 Thanksgiving of 2016. Third down and five. Bentley in trouble. Able to keep his balance and pick up a first down. And he got smoked as he went to the ground, but showed some grit there. He's a really good football player. Has such a good understanding of what the offensive coordinator, Kurt Roper, wants him to do. And right here, when nothing else is working, negotiate in the backfield and then go north and south. You see so many quarterbacks, especially young quarterbacks, try to escape the pocket going right and left, but not enough escaping north and south. He knew it was third and manageable. Just duck your head down and go get enough for a fresh set of downs. Another pass play here. Bentley sending it deep. Overthrew his man. Incomplete. Samuel actually broke that up. I think Jarius Moore had thought it was going to be an easy interception. And then Samuel, the wide receiver, actually knocked it away. I think Jarius Moorhead thought he was back returning a punt. I thought for sure this was going to be intercepted. Jake Bentley clearly didn't see number 31 Moorhead there in the center of the midfield. Just threw a big post route up to Debo Samuel, and Debo Samuel showing off and auditioning to play corner. Nice PBU, <laughs> Mr. Samuel. Thanks a lot. Signed your quarterback, Jake Bentley. They'll keep it on the ground here with Rico Dowdle. And Dowdle, like. NC State starting running back Naheem Hines not big in terms of height 5'10 but he's powerful 220 pounds he's a true sophomore think about it last year they went three and five in the SEC with a true freshman quarterback and a true freshman tailback the only team in the FBS to have a true freshman to lead them in both rushing and passing not to mention an elite true freshman on the outside at wide receiver in Brian Edwards this team is very young a lot of very capable players that are going to grow together. So that's why we expect such a huge improvement from the South Carolina offense this year. Ninth play of this drive, NC State bringing pressure here. Bentley's pass is caught for a first down inside the 40-yard line. Already two catches for Shai Smith, a true freshman here on this drive. The alignment defensively makes no sense. Look how far inside Sean Boone is. He's three yards inside Shai Smith. So Shai Smith gets a free first down, just three steps up and out. There's absolutely no reason. That's a misalignment in the secondary by NC State. They were in man to man. You have to funnel everything inside, not outside, the way Sean Boone did right there. They have some new players in the secondary, but they have eight defensive starters back. So you don't expect a mistake like that from the Wolfpack. 
as Dowdle is wrapped up after a gain of one by Jermaine Pratt, who's moving from the secondary to linebacker this year. You know, G Greg, this, this series for South Carolina has been successful for one very significant reason. Every time they've had a third down, it's been four yards or less. Their, their play calling, their selection, the choices made by Jake Bentley has put them in manageable situations. They've executed on third down. That's going to be a huge key, a huge key to keep that NC State offense on the sideline. And third down was a point of emphasis, Tom. They were one of the worst teams in the country on third down efficiency last year. Here's second and long and wide open. The catch is made by Dowdle inside the five. Touchdown! <laughs> Saw that mistake on third down earlier. Here's a mistake on second down by NC State's D. The wheel route has been the route of choice so far in the 2017 season. Saw it a lot on Thursday in Ohio State, Indiana. It's tough to cover, especially when you have a capable receiving running back like Rico Dowdle is. Bobbled it a little bit, didn't catch it the first time, but a great find by Jake Bentley. Alexander Wozniak, a walk-on kicker, puts it through. And you guys both talked about the prolific offense that we should see this year from South Carolina. They mixed it up there, the run and the pass on that impressive drive for the Gamecocks. The Clemson beat Alabama last year. A lot of people said, hey, the ACC, it's better than the SEC. What happens if Florida State beats Alabama tonight in the Chick-fil-A kickoff game 8 Eastern on ABC? Although, Greg, I don't think that's going to happen. Alabama, even though obviously it lost some people, still loaded. And can Florida State protect Francois? They couldn't do it last year, and you got to play the best D-line going, maybe. Two unknowns. Alabama's defensive front and Florida State's offensive line. Have they improved? If they want to contend for the national championship, that unit of five in the trenches up front offensively, they have to be significantly better. They have explosive weapons, though, on defense and on the offensive side. I mean, we went and saw practice last year at Alabama, and they go like four deep on the defensive line. There may not be big names back there, but they got some dudes. Another touch back. NC State will start at the 25. The touchdown by Rico Dowdle was created because of an error. These three defenders are responsible to cover this route. Now Dowdle coming out of the backfield doesn't get picked up by the two guys that are trying to handle the stem. As a result, he's uncovered easy pitch and catch for Jake Bentley. And Rico Dowdle could do the moonwalk into the end zone there. Can't leave guys uncovered, but that's something you see early in the season when you're still trying to figure out, especially with a young, inexperienced secondary that hasn't played a lot of football together. They might be juniors and seniors, but this NC State secondary, several guys starting for the first time today. That's a great point you made because no preseason games, right? The NFL, you get preseason, all you have in college is scrimmages, so you really don't know until you get through the first couple weeks what you got. Finley on the run and a sliding catch made by Kelvin Harmon. Hey guys, just real quick, uh, offensive coordinator Eli Drinkwitz has come down from the booth. Headsets are still not operating for both sidelines, so the coordinator now for NC State back on the field where he does not want to be. Right. He says he gets too emotional. He put himself in the booth this yeah. fall. Well, get rid of the emotion, coach. You're here now. The headset's not working for either team, and they run it here. They get the first down with Reggie Gillespie. It's amazing that we've seen touchdown drives of 14 plays for NC State and 11 plays from South Carolina with no headsets. That is truly amazing. We had one game like that in my career against Tennessee. We went three and out. So it's very, very difficult to handle the offense when you don't have communication with the box and the coaches looking overhead. So it tells you something about Finley and Bentley, right, and their understanding of the offense and what the coaches want? It means they're really, really good. <laughs> Here's Reggie Gillespie trying to run it back to the right after there was nothing there on the left side, and that's an excellent run by the junior from High Point, North Carolina. Gain of seven or eight on that play. 
But Greg, that stretch play, NC State loves it. Lance Thompson, the line coach at South Carolina, told me he's never seen a team run the stretch play the way NC State has. So they got to cover that backside cutback right there better than they did on that last play. Now they go empty set here on second and short. Gillespie has it go through his hands incomplete. So third down and two for North Carolina State. A little bit of a high throw right there. Ryan Finley has got to bring that one down. That was an easy pitch and catch. With some heat too, Greg. That's a back. You got to know your personnel as well. No question about that. But third down, manageable right here. I think if I'm Ryan Finley, I'm looking in the direction of number one, Jalen Samuels. They converted on a couple of third and longs and also converted on a fourth and short. This is third and two. It's a pass play. And it's a first down. Jalen Samuels on the catch to the 46-yard line of South Carolina. When it's third and manageable like this, he's almost always going to be the intended target. They just roll him out to the right. They sneak Samuels out right underneath. Easy pitch and catch for the conversion. Samuels pitching it back to Finley, and the tight end is open. Cole Cook inside the 20-yard line. He only had four catches all of last year. Lost his shoe on the play, but gets about 25 yards. And a nice little trick play right here. The pitch back, nobody picks up Cole Cook coming out of the backfield because he was aligned in a fullback position. Very, very nice execution and a great design by the offensive coordinator, Eli Drinkwitz. Cole Cook, two-time captain, a graduate student from Georgia. Hines. Grabbed inside the 15 by Sky Moore, so a gain of a four on the play. Cole Cook may not be the best athlete in his family. His mom, <laughs> Kelly Castile, was an All-American for Pat Summit at Tennessee back in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, he's a competitor. So I would imagine in that family, they had some competitions growing up. Talking to this coaching staff, they say that Cole Cook is the leader of this offense. He said he holds everybody accountable. And if you don't like what he has to say, then just... Step out of the room, kindly please, sir. He is really a tone setter for this Wolfpack. Oh. Finley with time on second down. Samuels with an incredible catch. He got leveled and he still hung on to the ball. Chris LeMans, the free safety, drilled Samuels. You talk about concentration. Great catch. First and goal now from the two. Hines to the end zone. Touchdown, NC State. But man, I still can't get over that catch by Samuels. It's behind him, first of all. He gets hammered, yet still hangs on. Behind him, high, and working outside in, knowing that there's an awaiting defender ready to hit him as hard as humanly possible. <laughs> Tremendous concentration and a great finish and a nice exclamation point by Hines getting into the end zone. So we've had three long drives that have resulted in touchdowns. The other score from South Carolina came on the opening kickoff and we are tied at 14 here in Charlotte, late first quarter. We're just about five hours away from the Chick-fil-A kickoff game between Florida State and Alabama at the brand new Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. I was there, Greg, for a preseason NFL game last week. It's a beautiful stadium, but it will be interesting because I walked on the field turf before the game. Yeah. It kind of felt like you're walking in a sandbox. Really? Because the turf is obviously new. No one had walked for run on it at all. But when you walked on it, you felt like your feet sank. Yeah. You have to be concerned with that and the fact that it looks like a spaceship. It could take off at any moment. <laughs> I think there's two things you got to be very leery of as you approach that game. But that's going to be a heck of a matchup tonight. Jimbo Fisher against Nick Saban, two of the best in the business. They keep it away from Samuel again and kick it to A.J. Turner on the 10-yard line. 
And Turner makes it to the 27 yard line before he's brought down. Let's check in with Tom Luganville down on the field. Now, guys, if you look down on the sideline here and you get a glimpse of Dave Dorn, you know, the coaches can't use headsets, they're down right now. He's overseeing things. The trust that he has. Eli Drinkwitz and the offensive staff were down here about the 25-yard line for that red zone package. And Dave Doran was about 15 yards away getting a drink of water. Hey, he was managed in other areas. The, the trust he has, and Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator, Eli Drinkwitz, when you don't have headsets, that tells you your staff is dialed in. No question. And in practice, Tom, he just coaches the scout team. He loves these coordinators and trusts them completely. Rico Dotto led that touchdown catch on the last drive. Is the ball carrier here, picks up four yards. Tackled by Jarius Moorhead and Bradley Chubb. We've seen some really methodical drives so far, which tells me there's tremendous continuity between the coordinator, the quarterback, and the other 10 guys in understanding what the plan is coming in. Tremendous production on third down so far. Nice run pass balance. It's been a fun game to watch so far to this point. Final play likely to the opening quarter. Bentley throws it away as he was being chased by Contavious Street. And that's the end of the first frame here in Charlotte. A ton of exciting plays. Starting with Debo Samuels opening kickoff for a score. NC State responded, and we're all even after one at Bank of America Stadium here in Charlotte. Here in the Queen City, we're knotted at 14. South Carolina's offense a year ago on third down was abysmal. Big point of emphasis so far, they're three for three. Look at the easy pitch and catch that Jake Bentley is finding because NC State is bringing internal pressure. Just nice, easy, outbreaking, high percentage completion throws and allowing his receivers to turn up field and get the intended yardage. Really nice performance so far on third down by the Gamecocks offense. So a shot there, Kurt Roper, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina. See if they pick up third and six here. And Benton's pass was nearly intercepted. Arius Moore dropping into coverage, almost got that one. Gamecocks have to punt. Bentley got rid of this ball really quick. Makes me think he thought pressure was coming again. This time, NC State shows it, bails out, and almost picks off the inside slant. Nice design by Coach Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator for NC State. Hines gets hit. Did his own guy hit him? Penalty marker down. I don't think Hines touched the ball. Somebody interfered with Hines. The question is, was it a teammate or was it a South Carolina player? Guys, take a close look. I was right down here. I believe he was blocked into him. There was contact between a South Carolina Gamecock and a Wolfpack player prior to that collision. South Carolina just saw a reaction or a replay on the scoreboard. They actually think that the ball was touched and that they recovered it inside the 30 yard line. But again, that depends on whether there was interference on Hines. Yeah, I mean, that's his own guy. So that's that's not a penalty. The question is, did the ball there hit Hines? Because if it did, it's South Carolina football. There's no foul for kick catch interference. NC State's own player was blocked into him. However, we have illegal touching by the kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 24 yard line. First down, NC State. Said illegal touching. Do, do they think that Gillespie touched the ball and that's why they're saying that? Because if Hines touched it or Gillespie and South Carolina recovered it, it's Gamecock ball. It didn't look live, though, like Hines touched it. No, he did. I think the officials got it right on the field. It'll be NC State ball.
Welcome back to Charlotte tied up here that last kicking game play will must champ on the opposite sideline. He felt that the ball when it hit the ground hit an NC State Wolfback player in Brian Edwards 89 recovered it. That was not the case. The call on the field was illegal touching on behalf of the officials. What they're saying is that the ball was touched. They call illegal touching. It's not a penalty against anybody by the by the kicking team prior to a receiving team player touching it. That player would have been 89 for South Carolina. Well, clear from that replay that it did not hit Hines, and it didn't even look like the last was really blocked into him. It just looked like he didn't wasn't really aware of where the ball was and where Hines was. It just ran into him. Thankfully for NC State, neither player got hurt. It's a dangerous play. Legs colliding like that. Just glad to see everyone's okay. Usually it's not really all that surprising to be a little bit unsure in week number one. Not the first time we've seen it, certainly won't be the last time. So NC State will have first down from its 24-yard line. And Gillespie is behind Finley here. Out on the flat to Samuels, past the 25-yard line. And out near the 30, let's go to the studio in Adnan. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Who saw this coming? Tom Herman's debut, and yet it's Jake bringing the noise, bringing the funk. 12-yard touchdown run, the most points Maryland's ever scored versus a ranked opponent. They're about to knock off Texas, Dave. How about DJ Durkin getting it done for Maryland today, the head coach? A lot of people said this was going to be a rebuilding year for Maryland. And, of course, the Big Ten Tell you what, that Big Ten East, top to bottom, you'd be hard best to find a better division than all of college football. How impressive was Indiana the other night as Samuels makes the catch and he's wrestled to the ground by Sky Moore, but it's a first down for the Wolfpack. Indiana was outstanding the other night for three and a half, two and a half quarters, but four quarter thing that comes back to get you when it gets a team with so much depth. Sure. I want to get to Jalen Samuels, though. That's his seventh touch already. You think he was a priority for this NC State offense to get him touches, to get him looks early in the game? Already one carry and six catches. Pretty impressive start for him. Gillespie taken down for a loss back at the 32. DJ Wanham got him first. Six-yard loss. Well, Jalen Samuels, one of the most productive players, and he also has the best shoes in college football. <laughs> he showed up to Media Day, ACC Media Day, wearing these. Say he wore them uh, when he announced that he was going to NC State on signing day, and only the second time he brought them out. He should wear them more often. It's unfortunate that you can't put pleats on the bottom of those and wear them <laughs> during the game. Pretty impressive stuff. Finley on the rollout, throws it away. Now, we showed you a good example of how to dress. Let's show you a bad one. Let's get out of the field and take a look at the Tom Luganville's uh, shoes. These aren't shoes, boys. These are man boots, okay? We got ourselves a little bit of a Merlot, maybe a Cabernet, if you will, in tint. I've seen so, you on the treadmill in boots before, though, so it's really not all that shocking. For that's a real workout. Around. It's a real workout. You love your boots. Third and long, though. Tough situation here for Ryan Finley. Perhaps a screen or maybe a draw. And there's movement by the left tackle. Tyler Jones. Ball start. Offense from a 53. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, the TV business, uh, Dress is important. We already showed you uh, Tom's uh, shoe of choice. What do you got? Let me see him. I'm going raise him up. Yeah, raise I, him up. I, I, can can't, get... <laughs> I, I can't get him that high. All right, we'll do it. Oh, thank goodness. There you okay. go. Free game. Yeah, I, I actually I tucked the the pant leg into the into the shoe. I think that's the look now. It's a good right? look. Yeah, good, nice, solid <laughs> sneaker. That's a millennial look. <laughs> Very much so. Which you would know about. Wide receiver screen on third and twenty. Stephon Lewis fumbled the ball. South Carolina recovers it. Right in the arms of Rashad Fenton for the Gamecocks. Penalty marker down on the near side of the field, away from where the fumble was. And they'll 
edge of the receiver, downfield against the offense. That point is the line. Results in the play. First down, Carolina. South Carolina. Well, it was third and long, and we told you to watch out for a screen or a draw. Well, they go screen. Stephon Lewis has it on the nice tunnel going north and south, but he loses it. Great hands defensively by Chris Lammons, the senior. He got his hand in there first and ripped it out, and a great recovery by Rashad Fenton. Now, if I'm South Carolina, offensively, I'm capitalizing on this momentum, and I'd throw it down the field and try to take a big shot right here. That's Debo Samuel in motion. They bring him into the backfield and hand it off, and NC State is all over A.J. Turner. Bradley Chubb, one of the top defensive players at any position in college, fat, uh, college football, had 22 tackles for a loss last year. That's second in school history behind former number one overall draft pick Mario Williams. Already got two tackles for a loss today. His cousin Nick Chubb plays at Georgia. You'll see him later today when Georgia hosts Appalachian State here on ESPN. Bentley on second and long. Goes underneath, and that pass behind Ryan Edwards. He was open. Third down and 12. We mentioned that Bradley's cousin Nick plays at Georgia. Bradley's dad, Aaron, played at Georgia. And actually, the Chubbs founded Chubbtown, which is in the state of Georgia, some 100 years ago. He's a special player, man. Very, very gifted, but also very grounded. Has a great understanding of how he fits into this defense. Never tries to do too much and always gives a lot of credit to his teammates. On third and 12, here comes Chubb again. Wow, how did he not get Bentley? Bentley passed the 35, gets the first down. How about that? The quarterback on third and 12, with no regard for his own safety, gets out of Bradley Chubb's hands and gets the first down. I don't know how he wasn't sacked. Great movement, subtle movement to the right right there. One step to the right and then north and south. What a great job by Jake Bentley. Avoiding the sack, feeling the pressure. Now, I don't think he has eyes in the back of his head, but look at that. Just a little bit of a move. You have to have a sixth sense as a quarterback, feeling that backside pressure, negotiating it, and then going straight north and south and getting enough for the fresh set of downs. Great job by the sophomore quarterback. There's Samuel getting the carry. And Samuel inside the 25-yard line. He had 15 rushes last year. They like to get him involved in the run game. There is a penalty flag down after the gain of three. Tell you what, guys, I really like this creative way now that South Carolina is coming up with ways to rush the football. We've talked about Bradley Chubb in that front. You're not just going to line up if you're South Carolina and run it at the teeth of this defense. you got to give credit to Kurt Roper. Very impressive game plan thus far. Well, this will be on South Carolina here, Luke. Holding. holding offense 89 10 yard penalty from the end of the run remains first down this NC State front is a big reason why a lot of people have been singing the praises of the Wolf Pack Bradley Chubb just the next in line in a long line of tremendous defensive linemen remember a few years back Dave a guy named Mario Williams first overall pick that team in 2005 for the Wolfpack, the best in school history, that defensive line. This year's team, however, they might be able to make an argument when it's all said and done. Bentley's pass is caught for a first down by Edwards inside the 10. Terrific throw by the true sophomore, a gain of 26. You're going to see this connection a lot. Jake Bentley knew exactly where he was going with it. Split safeties down the middle. Perfectly timed, perfectly thrown. Look at his eyes. No need to negotiate a defender. Just find where my wideout's going to be and hit him right in stride. This sophomore-sophomore combination is becoming lethal right before our very eyes. First and goal from the eight. King Cox looking to regain the lead here. Turner into the teeth of that NC State front. 
You're talking about that group not just as a pass rushing unit, but stopping the run. NC State up front. Mario Williams, Manny Lawson, they were great getting after the quarterback. John McCargo was an interior defensive lineman. This group might be better against the run. I mean, you got Contavious Street who benches 500 pounds and squats 700 pounds. Justin Jones squats 650 pounds. Where it patches to honor Mario Williams. Yeah. And this is a really stout group, and they're deep. They can go eight deep without dropping off significantly. Veteran group that knows exactly what they have to do to be successful. Ben Lee to the end zone, maybe just threw that away. It appeared that he did. You hope he did, based on how long that he overthrew Samuel. So third down and goal here. Greg, I think, line. Greg, I think you got to look to Hayden Hurst. I think you've got to get the tight end involved here. He's such a mismatch problem. Secondary and the safety play in terms of alignment, some mental errors, communication hasn't been what you want it to be for NC State on defense, and they might be one-on-one -on -one right now down here with at the top of your screen. There's Hayden Hurst right there in the slot at the top. One of the best tight ends in the country. Will Bentley look for him here on third and goal? Nobody in the middle of the field for NC State. Bentley throws it in the middle of the field, and it's a touchdown. Debo Samuel. Samuel scored twice today. Kickoff return and now receiving touchdown. Gamecocks back in front. Wozniak makes it a seven point South Carolina lead. Jake Bentley. They said he was improved. I don't think anyone anticipated this much improvement. He's the heart and soul of the Gamecocks team. And he's throwing strikes today. Gamecocks lead by seven. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, a century of innovation, and Goodyear, tires chosen by experts for superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. A beautiful day here in Charlotte, temperature in the low 80s, and some great offensive football. You made the point, Greg, about Jake Bentley's arm and how improved he is. How about his feet? That's what saved that drive. He picked up 12 yards on third and long, eluding the sack from Bradley Chubb to keep that possession going. Hines takes a knee, comes out to the 25. Going back to the touchdown that gave the Gamecocks the lead. Look at all the defenders up in the line of scrimmage for the Wolfpack. It's an all-out blitz, and South Carolina has the perfect play called with a corner by the inside receiver and a slant by the outside receiver. Jake Bentley knows exactly where it is. He drifts. He gives his receiver, Debo Samuel, a nice catchable ball right on the face mask. Perfect call at the perfect time. Understanding a tendency and executing with absolute perfection. Give that offensive line credit, too, for protecting Bentley throughout this game. They got guys that have moved all over the place, changing positions, guys that were hurt last year, transfers. They've held up pretty well against that terrific front for NC State. Samuels pass on the money. A huge hit by Jamarcus King on Harmon. It's a gain of about six. Last time South Carolina had some momentum, though, NC State just went right down the field methodically, 14 plays, and answered with a massive touchdown of their own. This is a veteran group. There's nothing that's going to shake them up. They have a great feel for what they're doing and have really only stopped themselves at this point with the fumble on the last possession. Pass out in space to Myers. Nice cut back. Myers gets the first down. You mentioned the experience. 18 returning starters for North Carolina State. 11 seniors. That's the second most in FBS behind TCU. That's a big reason why. They're a dark horse pick by some. Not a lot, but there have been some people that have said they're a contender for the playoff. I'm not sure if you agree with that. That's too far. Now, they will beat somebody in that Atlantic division that's really good. 
like Louisville, Florida State, or Clemson. But they got to prove to me that they won't lose to a team that's significantly worse than them, like they did a year ago against ECU and against Boston College. I got to see more consistency from this team, and they have a chance to prove it. Hines with a pickup of one. Well, Dave Dorn, when he took the job, they were three and nine his first year. They've improved slowly over the last three seasons. You saw seven and six record, the bad loss against ECU and Boston College, but they almost had Clemson beat. They really should have beaten Clemson. And had they, the Tigers maybe aren't even in the playoff picture. They had a chance to beat Florida State, but didn't happen. And they're trailing here to South Carolina. Finley on second down. Completion to C.J. Riley. Freshman to keep an eye on for this NC State team in the passing game this year. He's out of bounds at 45, a six-yard pickup. You know, Dave, you look at this roster. You mentioned those seniors. The bulk of those guys are red-shirted players. This is a dominant red-shirt senior, red-shirt junior team. So the excuses are running thin. This is a team that should contend for the Atlantic side. But man, Clemson looks so good today. They got so many guys on defense back yet. Yeah, they lost their offensive weapons. But Kelly Bryant looked good. You got Florida State, you got Louisville all in the same division. Returning Heisman Trophy winner. Third and three. Caught for a first down by Jacoby Myers in South Carolina territory. Really nice route by Jacoby Myers right there. Just a little bit of a stutter hesitation, making sure that he got enough room. Look at that route. See that double stem at the top? Now that's tough on the quarterback because you're not sure when he's breaking. But that's also very tough on the defender who has no idea when that route's going to break off. Well executed, well timed, and a nice conversion from the pack. Finley waits for somebody to come open, and it was knocked away by Yurik Jones, who had apparently dropped in coverage. You know, Greg, you know, everybody talks about qualities at the quarterback position and you know what's the important thing to have. But the two things we've seen from these players today are poise and accuracy. Both Ryan Finley and Jake Bentley have placed the ball in catchable spots, haven't taken risks with the football, and they haven't wilted under pressure. They've stood in there, they trust their football team, they trust their receivers, and as a result, have been efficient. Couldn't agree with you more, Tom. Been well played at the quarterback spot so far. Finley stepping up, slings it complete. We'll see where they spot Harmon. I think he had enough for the first down at the 33, and that's where, they're where they will mark it. Harmon, a true sophomore, gain of 11. Nice, strong hands right here from Kelvin Harmon. Good throw, too, but this is well covered by Jamarcus King, who's long at six foot two and has long enough arms to potentially knock that one away. That's a fight on the curl route to the right hand side. A good job by Harmon coming back to the quarterback. And a nice throw by Finley hitting him right where it needs to be. NC State moving again. Ball on the 37-yard line. Gillespie finds a little bit of running room, but a flag comes in. Boy, Sky Moore. A big tackle. Gain of a couple. We'll see if it comes back. It's in the holding area where the flag was dropped. Holding. Holding. Offense number 67. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains first down. Hey Greg and Tom, we were talking about how competitive the Atlantic is. Is this finally the year that Miami wins the coastal? Or is Virginia Tech the team to beat in that division? It's Miami. And in a lot of reasons why a lot of people like NC State this year. They're really good in the front seven defensively. They can set the tone along the line of scrimmage. And they can get after you with a couple of young studs at linebacker. A couple questions at quarterback, but Tom, Miami's the team to beat on that side of the ACC this year. Finley throwing a deep ball, adjusting to it as Myers to make the catch. Ryan Finley told us he worked on his deep ball passing in the offseason. It looks like that work has paid off a gain of 32. Great throw up the field, and a really nice job by Jacoby Myers, the converted quarterback to adjust and move his body to make the catch a little bit easier. Big plays in the passing game. They got to find some. 
Stephon Lewis on the catch, held up and fumbled the ball, but they blow it dead at the 10 yard line. Eight of five. We talked to Ryan Finley, and he said, Yeah, I just watched quarterbacks, so I can learn how to be more effective throwing the ball down the field. I watched Tom Brady, I watched Aaron Rodgers. Of course, what quarterback wouldn't? But another quarterback that he watched was Jake Browning from Washington, who doesn't have a real strong arm, but has tremendous anticipation and puts a lot of air under the football. So right now, not a lot of shots downfield, but he connected on a big one to get them into the red zone here. A six of seven for 67 yards passing on this drive alone. Second and five from the 10. Hines running, gets hit in the backfield. Swallowed by Tyler Stallworth. We had a great camp for South Carolina. Sky Moore in there as well. He made such a made such a big difference with the South Carolina defense having Sky Moore back after missing last year with that neck injury. It's a great job by the South Carolina defensive line, though, pushing and reestablishing the line of scrimmage on the right hand side and forcing the cutback where Sky Moore was there to bring down the running back. Well done. A tough spot here in the red zone, third and long for the Wolfpack. Got Jalen Samuels here in the triangle bunch formation to the bottom of the screen. Finley overthrown in the end zone. Trying to hit C.J. Riley. And so a major problem area for NC State in 2016. We'll see if it's an issue to start 2017. They were 9 of 17 on field goals last year. So Carson Wise, who's a grad transfer from Carson Newman, who started his career at Virginia Tech, he's from Blacksburg. He'll get his first attempt. He's already made a couple of extra points. This will be a 29-yard try for three points. troubles as the place kicker last year now is Carson wise missing and NC State comes away with nothing after an impressive drive it remains a seven point South Carolina lead ESPN it's the Chick-fil-A kickoff game 25th ranked Tennessee against Georgia Tech that game being played in Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta just like tonight's Alabama Florida State game which will be on ABC at 8 Eastern number one versus number three after the missed field goal South Carolina taking over on the 20 Bentley to the air finds Edwards for a first down past the 30 let's check in with Adnan We'll get to Adnan in a minute. Brian Edwards, who had 44 catches a year ago, already a couple in this game. Moves the sticks, first down in the 32. South Carolina has all of its timeouts, four minutes remaining. Looking to add to the lead. It's a shovel pass to Dowdle, and Dowdle takes it out near midfield. He already scored on a catch earlier. Everyone knows this NC State defense is elite when it comes to getting off the field defensively. But so far, Kurt Roper, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina, has done a great job making that defensive line think twice about pinning their ears back and rushing the passer. Plays like that, where you move the pocket and just slip one underneath, are very tough. And they get defensive linemen thinking, and that's not what you want if you're NC State, and you know this is an elite group. They got 17 yards on that last play here. Bentley in trouble, and he throws it behind Hayden Hurst. Really the first time he's been targeted. Hurst, who is one of the best tight ends in the country, he's 24 years old, played baseball for a couple of years, was a walk-on. He's going to go to Florida State initially in a baseball scholarship, then went pro. He's a first-team preseason All-SEC tight end. And he is really, 
really a good player. He returned punts at one point last year. He is athletic and he's thick. You don't realize how big he is until you see him up close. Lives in the weight room and has been a terrific mentor to his young quarterback. One of the best teammates on the team. That's crazy. 250 returning punts. 250 pounds. Underneath to Williams into NC State territory. Now let's check in with that man. All right, Dave, I just want to keep you in suspense. Thanks for understanding. PlayStation Views, Multiview. I want to show you what's going on everywhere. Michigan and Florida. Wolverines just scored. They're leading it 10-3 against the Gators. And also over on ESPNU, we've got Troy also in action against Boise State. So we get you covered. And of course, ESPN app will hook you up as well. Back to you and Greg. Now that pause was good. Silence is something I'm trying to teach Greg and Tom. Neither is uh, obliged, though, Adnan. <laughs> Third and five at the 46 of NC State. Bentley to the air. No, he's not. Level for a sack by Sean Boone back at the 42 yard line. Just a great diagram. Watch Sean Boone right there. He's about to split right up the middle. This is called a three up the middle pressure, and you can't block it. The only way offensively you can handle it. This type of technique is by getting rid of it quickly. Jake Bentley had a deep, slow, developing route coming and just not enough time. Sean Boone gets home. A great defensive play call from Dave Huxtable. Really putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, especially right up the middle. Got a stoppage. Unsure if it's delay a game or if Will Muschamp called timeout before the penalty. You know, Greg and and Dave, when you look at, at, at offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. You look at that play right there from Jake Bentley. Now let's just let's just think. He tried to do something stupid, force the ball. It turns the ball over. Now NC State's got the ball in plus territory. So that sack right there gives you a chance to flip field position. So not ideal, but not devastating. Just a great blitz. I mean, three players right over your center you just can't stop it quarterback has to see it and his youth he'll learn it at some point when he recognizes that play defensively ball's got to come out immediately bad punt by Joseph Charleston actually took a good bounce back in a moment All State is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All State has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Now, some may be surprised to tune in and see this score 21 14 South Carolina. NC State, a team mini field, will contend not only for the ACC championship, but for a playoff spot. And the Wolfpack trail, but they have possession. All of their timeouts. First down in their 21. Ryan Finley, the quarterback, throws high and incomplete. Let's go to Adnan in the studio. All right, Dave. Thank you very much. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, Tom Herman, a historic debut for Texas, but not in the manner he or any of the other Longhorns were anticipating. Also, Michigan and Florida is over on ABC. Highlights of that game so far. And Saquon Barkley, that's Jesse Palmer's pick to win the Heisman. He, Joey Galloway, and me coming up at the half. Dave, back to you. Saquon Barkley, one of the most dynamic players in college football. I think your teammate was the last running back to win the Heisman, right? Mark Ingram? Derrick Henry. Oh, same, that's right, yep. Same school. Same school, different team. Hines passed the 25 out to the 27. All right, our right, athletic trivia question now. Who were the head coaches the last time NC State defeated oh South Carolina? Those are so hard. That's <laughs> so, so hard. The last time they played was when Russell Wilson was the quarterback. Oh, that's so easy. NC State, but the uh, they didn't win. So it's not the answer. I didn't, you think it's easy? Come on, Luke. Pass caught for first down. Ruled inbounds. Harmon on the catch for the clock so, is So moving. we know it's not Tom O'Brien because Russell Wilson was there. I'm going to go with Dick Sheridan. No. No? Well, why do you already have the answer? 
I got it right in front of me. I mean, it's not That's that hard. Not the play-by-play -play guy has the card, which is the question and the they answer. They shouldn't have given you the card. Can you give us a hint on the year? I'll give you a hint on the South Carolina head coach. I think uh, I know who that is. He I don't worked, know NC He worked State. at ESPN for, for Is it the oh, same Lou head, Holtz. Was it the same head coach at both schools? Is it Lou Holtz? Lou 1999, Holtz. Mike O'Kane was the head coach at NC State, and Lou Holtz was the head coach at South Carolina. Mike O'Kane. I would not have gotten Mike O'Kane. No. <laughs> Lou Holtz, I know. I don't even know. Were you born in '99? Is that yes? Okay. I was born in '99. He was he was in a pack and play in '99. Oh, <laughs> you too. We're in a onesie. I to deal with you the rest of the season. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> that onesie was cool, Tom. You know that. I still wear them. Of course. <laughs> Nightly. Uh, footed right. pajamas. <laughs> First down for NC State on its 34-yard line. They called the timeout after Harmon was tackled inbounds and the clock was going to run. Empty set, Finley. Wow, look at the space they give Hines. Easy pitch and catch. First down, out of bounds at the 45. A lot of speed, so they want to give Naheem Hines some room because he can run right by you if you get up close to him. Now, very aware, obviously, of where the boundary was there by Hines. One minute on the clock. If you're Ryan Finley, you're thinking, we have a ton of time. We have an eternity, plus two timeouts to get in the field goal range or potentially get a chance at a touchdown. So don't need to push the ball down the field just yet. Finley again with time. Harmon on the catch. Heads for the sideline. Out of bounds at the 42-yard line. They're just taking five, six seconds off the clock per play and getting 13 yards like they did there. And they're getting it to the boundaries. That's what's crazy. The boundaries are just opening up each wide sideline, giving them, they don't even need to use a timeout. Yeah, South Carolina's defense has to protect the boundary or else they're just going to throw 12-yard curl routes right down the field into the red zone. Ryan Finley. Looked like maybe South Carolina was offside. Harmon with another grab. Out of bounds inside the 30. There's a penalty flag down. Looked like uh, he was outside. Outside. Defense number four. That penalty is declined. Result of a play is the first down. That was Bryson Allen Williams, but they take the play. And will Carson Wise get another chance? He missed from 29 yards. Obviously, NC State hoping they don't have to worry about a field goal, just an extra point for Carson White. Still a lot of off coverage, especially to the field by South Carolina's defense. You can't even see him in the picture there. And they throw it that way, and Stephon Lewis on the catch of the 19. So why do they do that when they get down here in a condensed field? It makes no sense, especially with 45 seconds left and a couple timeouts. I can understand if it's running really low and you're wanting them to use their timeouts, but not here. They're almost already in scoring position if they have a kicker. Yeah. And you don't want to give up free yardage in the red zone. I mean, that's five, six yards a pop at the very minimum. And they're running quarters right there with huge cushions on the perimeter. And the issue on top of it to compound it, Greg, is there's no pass rush. So they're not, South Carolina's not talented enough to do that on the back end and still provide pressure with just four down. All right, guys, as you've watched South Carolina for a half and know Will Muschamp's history, and as an assistant coach and also at Florida where he had a couple of good seasons, last year they won twice as many games as the year before. What's the realistic expectation for them this year? Can they be a contender in the East with a quarterback like Jake Bentley, or is that asking too much here in it's, 2017? It's asking too much. This roster is so young. Everything would have to align perfectly for them to advance to Atlanta to the SEC championship. Florida and Georgia, they're just further along in their development and have more guys at their disposal. South Carolina is a little thin. If they stay healthy, though, anything's possible with that offense. Finley has one-on-one -on -one coverage, throws end zone incomplete. Let's see if they get there. Do they call it on Lewis or do they call it on the defender? They're calling Lewis it on made, Lewis. Yeah, it looked like he pushed off on the corner. Steven Montag. Pass interference, offense, number 12, 15-yard penalty, remains second down. Yeah, he pushed off on Rashad Fenton that time. And so that's a huge penalty here because, again, you got all these issues with your field goal team. Oh, I don't know about that. Looking at the replay. So that's play uh, on, that's right? That's a no call to me if I'm in that spot. Now, I understand what the official saw. 
the left hand of Lewis was on the back of Fenton and he saw it extend just a little bit but to me that's not enough to throw a flag not a 15 yard flag with the momentum that NC State has on second and 18. Finley finds Samuels inside the third. He got a chunk of it back. It's third down on about 12 here. NC State with one timeout left. Little tempo, guys. Well, Those, they have to here with yeah. the clock moving. Still got a timeout. Finley down the sideline, back shoulder caught by Harmon. There's a flag that's thrown late. Harmon out of bounds inside the five with 13 seconds left. Are they going to call him for pushing off on Jamarcus King? They shouldn't. That was a great catch. And Jamarcus King never turned around and tried to make a play on the ball. This should be defensive pass interference, if anything. I'll tell you, Kelvin Harmon, that's a name to watch this year for NC State. True sophomore at five touchdowns a year ago. A school record for freshmen. This is on the D. Holding. Defense number seven. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is the first down. Well, either way, yeah, you see that right arm extended far beyond that five yard cushion mark. Yeah, that's a good call by the official, but a much better catch than it was call. Yeah, Harmon is really talented. He's from Palmyra, New Jersey. Will Muschamp just called a timeout there. Huddle his defense up. They got 13 seconds left. So you got a couple plays. First down and goal on the four. Trailing by seven. Let's take a look at this week's rankings brought to you by Goodyear. So number two, number eight, and number nine all struggled for a while, but then eventually pulled away. You got Alabama, Florida State tonight, eight Eastern. Boy, Oklahoma State looked good, didn't they? Against Tulsa? Yeah, they did. Mason Rudolph made a really, really, really nice throw look easy multiple of times on Thursday night. He is really appeared to have taken the next step as a passer. I'm going to let Ohio State and Washington off the hook for sluggish performances, though. Going into a tough road environment, I understand why they might have come out of the gate a little slow. First and goal on the four for NC State. Finley to the end zone touchdown Jacoby Myers so a guy that moved from quarterback to wide receiver because of the arrival of Ryan Finley last year gets a touchdown pass from Finley here in 2017 to get within a point what a great two minute drive by this NC State offense. Outstanding execution, clock management, and now you're gonna kick off with under 10 seconds remaining. That's exactly what you want in an end of half situation. And Wise able to shake off that missed field goal. Get the extra point, tie it up. Jacoby Myers just on a little out route, nothing to it. Piece of cake. He gets a little bit of a rub from the outside receiver Harmon. Look at number three, go inside it. Never actually makes contact. Forces DJ Smith to go over the top. And without rolling out the quarterback to the right, it still becomes a very similar play to the play that we saw that ended the 2016 season. Just a sprint right where Deshaun Watson hit Hunter Renfro for the game winning touchdown in the national championship and I know Gamecock fans didn't want me to bring that up but it's a very similar play without rolling the quarterback out to his right well executed well thrown and a great play call by Eli Drinkwitz we have seen some terrific throws so far 131 passing yards is, is really good for a half How about 294 <laughs> for Ryan Finley I'll tell you what guys I and I know it's the first game of the season but I've been on this sideline now for four years I don't know if I've ever seen first game offenses for two teams as efficient and well oiled as these two teams have been minimal mistakes explosive plays supreme execution that's exactly why we're knotted up here going into half 
They kick it away from Samuel again, who had a touchdown. Running forward is Turner to receive it. And he's wrestled out of bounds with four seconds left in the half. Speaking of terrific passing that we've seen on display, how about yesterday in our two QBs in a pass segment? You know the ratings skyrocket when the former NFL quarterback misses everything. Yeah, that's and the hilarious. pencil neck play-by-play yeah. -play guy hits everything. <laughs> Luganville hit one upright, but you gotta hit two. Stop it. I got a piece of that one and then Stop buried, it. buried the Stop right up right there to get the victory. Stop See, it. The the thing is, Tom, you and I were throwing spirals. Yeah, not kickoffs. So, so that limits the amount of space that we have. It has to be right on the money. Dave yeah. was throwing it sideways. That's true. I mean, it looked like a kickoff or a really ugly punt. Not to mention, I'm conceding victory to Dave under protest as game was called due to field personnel kicking us off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough out of you. Thankfully, you're quiet for the next 20 minutes. I'll bask in my glory at halftime. We're tied. Back to the studio. Listen, we need a lot more two QBs in a patch. All right. Thank you very much, Dave and fellas. You're watching the Lexus Halftime Report. Entertaining game so far between NC State and South Carolina special teams, in fact, benefiting the Gamecocks here. Close one so far, but take a listen to what Coach Muschamp had to say with our own Tom Luganville. Coach, how much of an effect did not having headsets in that first half have on your ability to coach the game? It's absolutely ridiculous. Coach Com's fired. That's ridiculous. As far as coaching your football team, couldn't ask for more offensively from a production standpoint. Mo moving the ball extremely well. They continue to bring pressure. If we're able to block it, that uh, we can get some balls down the field. We hit the two touchdown passes. We're both on pressure. Uh, we got to settle down a little defensively and play a little better in the throwing game. The ball's coming out quick. Go, Coach, go ahead. This halftime report is presented by Lexus. Experience amazing. This halftime report is presented by Lexus. Experience amazing. Welcome back to the 2017 Belt College Kickoff presented by PlayStation View. With Greg McElroy and Tom Luganville, I'm Dave Pash back in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium. SEC ACC matchup to start and end the day. Florida State Alabama, of course, later tonight on ABC. Fun first half here, tied at 21. Ryan Finley threw the ball 34 times. They ran 21 more plays than South Carolina. But the different special teams and turnovers. Turnover by NC State, missed field goal by NC State, and then South Carolina started the game with a 97 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Now it's NC State's turn. Naheem Hines, one of the fastest players in the country, it just kicked it over his head so far today. Parker White, the kickoff man for the Gamecocks. And Hines might have a shot at this one. Nope, drifted a bit, so he takes a knee. It will come out to the 25. Greg mentioned that uh, Ryan Finley threw the ball 34 times in that first half. Do you expect more of that? Do you think we'll see more of the run game here for the Wolfpack? They have to try to establish some balance. Finley's been outstanding, very methodical. Both these offenses have been able to move the ball at will through the air. If you look at some of the drives that they've been able to put together, you see some eight, you see some nine, you see some 14 play drives that resulted in scores. Really well done. You can tell that Eli Drinkwitz is thrilled. And then on South Carolina's side, they also have had some many opportunities to move the football. Very efficient, but both teams have to make running the football a priority. Don't Both look are like, really struggling so far. Don't look like we're seeing a run here. And nobody in the backfield again. But when it's working, why not? Catch made by Samuels. Up seven or eight on the play. And back to South Carolina. You can see there's only been one three and out in the entire game. And that happened on the Gamecocks second possession. The last drive, obviously. Ignore that. It was a knee but really well executed so far by both teams. It's been a joy to watch, and it's really going to come down to who performs better in the second half in the trenches offensively and who can establish the run. They try Hines here, and he has the first down. They had no rushing yards in the second quarter. They get about seven on that play. Let's check in with Lukes down on the field. The guys, right before halftime, talking with Will Muschamp, he mentioned how he's got to align better defensively, come up with some different areas. So there's three distinct areas for South Carolina this half. Identify, 
align and adjust. So you want to identify the personnel, align correctly so you can actually play the defense, and then when the shift in the motion happens, make the proper adjustments. Finley going to throw it away here. He was about to get leveled. Dante Sawyer was in the backfield for South Carolina. South Carolina's got to be really pleased with the way their defense in the trenches has played to this point. That was kind of a question mark coming into the season. Now, they addressed it, brought some fresh faces, went to the JUCO route for a couple different guys, but that group up front has really held their own against an experienced, physical NC State offensive line. Finley gets hit hard and throws it over the head of the intended receiver, Jacoby Myers. Sky Moore wallops Finley. Tom, this is that alignment. Sky Moore yep. just comes right off the right-hand side, trying to mix up their looks and try to catch Ryan Finley when he doesn't expect pressure. Nicely executed to set up the third and long, Tom. Not near as much cushion in the defensive secondary. Secondary playing confident. That's the adjustments now that they've made in the back end. How about the clean hit by Sky Moore? We saw a big hit last night on Jake Browning of Washington, but it was a clean hit. Guys are learning to get their head out of the way, hit the quarterback, and not get flagged. Finley going to get hit again. Sack at the 38-yard line. Keir Thomas, sophomore from Miami. Had two sacks all of last year. Here, Thomas, what a great job coming after the quarterback. They weren't real confident in this group being able to rush the passer with just four. Right there, Kier Thomas, a defensive end on the depth chart, slides inside the defensive tackle, makes a guy miss, and has a great play. Speaking of making guys miss, Lamont's always oh, slipped. They already had a kick return for a touchdown. Lamont's thought, you know what? I, I think I'm going to take this one to the house. But after 28 yards, he lost his footing. Quick sudden burst. Starts it to the outside, right upfield. Smart play by South Carolina, too. They could have very easily had a block in the back right there on number seven. Jamarcus King. Instead, he wisely, the senior, stays out of his way and just kind of sets a basketball screen and allows Lamonds to get up field and give the Gamecocks great field position. They'll start at their 49-yard line. Jake Bentley, 10 of 17 passing, two touchdowns, had a couple of big runs in that first half. NC State was in the neutral zone. Justin Jones jumping offside for the Wolfpack there. One of those eight senior returning starters on the defense for the Wolfpack. Outside. Defense, number four, in the future zone, causing the offense to react. Five yard penalty. First down. They said Gerard Fernandez. It looked like it was Jones. Dave Dorn, a defensive guy. He was the defensive coordinator at Wisconsin. And got the head coaching job at Northern Illinois and then five years ago took the NC State job. This is his best team he feels. But they're in for a fight today against the South Carolina team. Won six games last year. Dowdle pushing the pile near a first down at the 41 yard line. I like the way this kid runs. He loves to run between the tackles. Visiting with them in the spring. He said look. He might not have the burst that A.J. Turner has, but this guy is going to pound you, and he's going to make you feel it. And he gives South Carolina second and very manageable. So if I'm Kurt Roper, the offensive coordinator, this is the situation in which I would take a shot downfield, knowing that even on an incompletion, we got third and inches coming up. Instead, they keep it on the ground, play it conservatively, and get the first down with Dowdle. Been so many good running backs at South Carolina the last decade. The best of all of them, Marcus Lattimore. Remember Marcus? He was a terrific player. He played for Jake Bentley's dad, 
Bobby who's currently on the South Carolina staff in high school and Jake looked up to Marcus Lattimore well Lattimore looked up to Bobby Benley Marcus who had his career cut short because of that horrific leg injury tried the NFL didn't work he's now head coach in high school in South Carolina Marcus Lattimore good for him what a great young man and what an incredible football player play fake for Bentley look out gets away from the defender looking downfield letting it fly and it's pulled in for the touchdown by Samuel <laughs> Have fun. Samuel's having fun. Wow. What a talent. There's an injured North Carolina State player. That's the reason for the delay back near midfield. Freddie Phillips, a backup linebacker, shaken up. I tell you what, fellas, you don't have to have a dynamic runner at quarterback. You have to have a guy that can extend the play when things aren't perfect. That play could have just as easily been dropped for a loss of 15 yards. Absolutely. <laughs> and Jake Bentley got around the rusher and threw an absolute dime. What a throw, what a catch. Three total touchdowns for Samuel. Two receiving and the kickoff return. The extra point, seven point, South Carolina lead. Debo Samuel, he's been hurt from time to time in his career, but man, is he looking fresh today. But how about his quarterback? Evading the would-be tackler and throwing a perfect throw to the back of the end zone. Will Virginia Tech be a contender in the ACC this year? We'll see. Virginia Tech play West Virginia. Old Big East rivals meeting. And the Capital One Sunday night kickoff. 7.30 Eastern. Tomorrow night. Sunday night game. That great finish last year's Texas beat Notre Dame on ABC on Sunday night a year ago Debo Samuel a one handed touchdown catch three touchdowns in all today here's Hines returning this kickoff for NC State hit hard of the 28 yard line this is a great lesson for all young wide receivers out there that want to play this game at a high level Debo Samuel's down here on a post route he's just trying to vacate the zone for Hayden Hurst for the throwback. Hayden Hurst is going to be wide open, but Jake Bentley actually gets outside of contain, recognizes that Debo has nothing but green grasses in front of him, and throws a perfect throw to the back corner of the end zone. Not initially supposed to be the intended wide receiver. Hayden Hurst was on the late leak out on the throwback. But Debo Samuel ran his route as hard as humanly possible and was, re was rewarded with an incredible throw from his quarterback for the touchdown. Saw Phillips getting carted off there, plus offside on South Carolina. Here's a trick play by NC State, but the game clocks are not full. Lewis is crunched in the backfield. Keir Thomas, who had a sack on the last drive, makes a play here along with Kobe Smith. So you just a great job by the right hand side. Now this is a matchup that I don't like. Ryan Finley evades the block. He's supposed to secure the edge. Keir Thomas got too far vertical and Finley couldn't block him. Therefore it results in a huge loss on first down for the pack. Loss of six. Here's Harmon. Lifted up and dropped at the 32 so he gets six of it back. Eldridge Thompson made the tackle, so third down and long now. I'll tell you what, third and long now, each of the last two series. Every time South Carolina's had momentum, NC State has had an answer with the following drive, but back-to-back, -back, third and tens for this.
this offense to open up the third quarter for NC State. Keep an eye on Jalen Samuels. He's their go-to guy on third down and long. Finley in trouble. Down he goes. Sacked again. Lost the ball. Recovered by South Carolina. Dante Sawyer got there to the quarterback. Forced the fumble. Recovered by Bryson Allen Williams. Second lost fumble by NC State. Let's see if Finley was down. So you see that left knee hitting the ground, but is the ball already coming out? Ball is starting to come out. It's almost simultaneously. Boy, the way his leg was bent. He's lucky he's not hurt. Oh, man, I mean, that was brutal. Wow. The previous plays under further review. Ryan Finley luckily walked off the field there. Very fortunate. One more time. Yeah, look at the ankle there and how it's tough with the official standing in the way. There's nothing in these replays that I've seen to this point that makes me think that they're going to change this rule. It feels simultaneous. I think it's moving there, coming out. The ball is moving, and his knee is on the ground, as you can see. But that ball is already out of his grasp. I happen to think this call is going to be confirmed. You have to have indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt. There it is, right there. in the ruling in the field. It's moving. You can see the nose of the football move just ever so slightly, just milliseconds before that knee touches the turf. And even if you're not sure, you can't overturn it based on that. And unless you're 100% certain that the knee was down before right. the ball came out, it's too close to tell there. Because the call on the field was a fumble yep. ruled in favor of South Carolina. Whether or not this is overruled or confirmed, guys, uh, South Carolina has obviously come out of that locker room with a distinctly different plan in terms of how they're going to get after Ryan Finley. The freshman Keir Thomas has had a, a, a big influence, as has bringing Bryson Allen Williams, number four, off of the edge. Some pressure packages. This South Carolina defense has ramped up. They're confident, but they've made some changes, and it's certainly something that has got NC State on their heels because they don't have any answers right now. And Tom in the first half, Ryan Finley, he was 27 to 34 in rhythm. I mean, knew where he was going with the football, no got doubt. it out on time, and didn't allow any chaos to happen along the line of scrimmage. Now he's starting to see ghosts. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, South Carolina. I know people really don't care about the language there because you know, NC State fans just care that they fumbled the ball, but the reason the referee James Carter said the ruling in the field stands is they did not feel there was enough video evidence to overturn it. Right. There wasn't enough evidence to confirm it, but in the end, the ruling in the field was a fumble, so South Carolina takes over inside the 15 yard line. And looking at that left leg of Finley again, that looked really bad. You already see the brace on that left leg. Here comes a trick play by South Carolina. The pitch to Debo Samuel. There's a flag down. And Samuel out of bounds. No gain on the play. Let's see what the penalty marker is for. Get it to the hot guy, right? Like Absolutely. hoops. Just get it to the guy with the hot hand. I'll tell you what, he's caught two touchdowns and then returned to kickoff. Might as well let him run. Illegal formation. Be careful in the red Offense. area doing that, More though. You've got momentum. Field. You don't want Five to maybe penalty. get a negative play that can concern you a little bit. Right now, he's he, Steph Curry. Just get him the ball. Yeah, just feed him. Find a way to feed him. I mean, he is. You now, he battled some issues early in his career when it came to soft tissue, hamstring issues, things that have kept him sidelined. But now he's finally healthy. He's finally at a place where he has the flexibility necessary to play a full season. And man, is he a weapon for this Gamecocks offense. 51 catches the final seven games of last year. Those were all starts by this guy, Jake Bentley. And that lead throwing to him again. Samuel on the catch inside the 10. Just working to the corner. A nice clear out with an underneath by the outside receiver. It's tough to cover. Simple smash concept, but he seems to feel where open space is. And 
That's a real testament to his football acumen and his understanding of Kurt Roper's offense. Taping up that left ankle there of NC State quarterback Ryan Finley. Dowdle able to break a tackle and score. Touchdown, South Carolina. Just simple little counter to the right hand side or even a weak side power a little down and a pull and a wrap one broken tackle and pay dirt that's the second missed tackle that's led to a big play by Bradley Chubb All-America candidate for NC State this is why college football so great right going into the year we really don't know who's good who's not there's no preseason games Everybody on the NC State bandwagon, but right now it's Carolina by 14. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Pizza Hut. Put every dollar you spend toward unlimited pizza points with Pizza Hut's Hut Rewards. And welcome back to Charlotte. Taco Bell, a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and fans like these at games all season long. Less than a two hour drive from Columbia, South Carolina. And the Gamecock fans who came to the ball game enjoying themselves. Fired up their team up 14. This just moments ago celebrating another touchdown. 35 points by South Carolina. Now we're going to find out what NC State is made of. Is this a different Wolfpack team than in previous years? Hines hit twice, and down he goes, shy of the 15-yard line on the kickoff return. Our legendary, legendary moment, sponsored by Destiny 2, George Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner, South Carolina. Herschel Walker of Georgia gave him high praise. 14 touchdowns over 1,700 rushing yards. King George, Tuesday, September 5th, 9 Eastern. 14 points off turnovers for South Carolina. Ryan Finley, who had that awkward landing. You see that left foot with red tape on it now. From the 13-yard line, they keep it on the ground. And Gillespie picks up four. Here's Tom. Fellas, if you take a look at Jalen Samuels on the sideline, they've, the athletic trainers have fitted, fitted him with some sort of, I guess what I would call a contraption on the back left of his leg from up into his hip all the way down into his sock. Something to do with the back hamstring or something. He has not come back into the game. They were working on him as well as Ryan Finley. Let's track his progress. That's a huge loss if he's not in the game. Their best player, perhaps, at offense. Gillespie to the 20 yard line before he's dropped by Taylor Stallworth. Third down. This is a huge third down for NC State. So far, have not done anything positive in the second half so far. The one positive thing that we've seen from the Wolf Pack is that number one is now on the field again. There at the top of the screen at the top of the bunch formation. Can you see his leg in there, Greg, with that contraption on the back to see how he moves? On third and three, South Carolina brings a little pressure. Harmon caught it where, or excuse me, Samuels, and it's gonna be enough for a first down at the 25-yard line. Yeah, how do you run with that thing in his back of his leg there? It's a rubber band, and, and yeah. these have been used for the last few years or at least I think the last few years and it helps when your muscles are tight or you have a strain or something along the lines of that keeps them loose keeps those muscles flex so we'll keep watching whether or not he can open it up that was a short route so it didn't really test it the last be trying to get outside he can't grabbed at the ankles by Dante Sawyer and Dan Burke now in the studio all right, Dave, want to update you on the P.J. Fleckless and maybe Feckless Western Michigan team, especially against USC. Ronald Jones here with a 16-yard run has no issue putting the Trojans on the board 7 to nothing early. Back to two quarterbacks and a pass. 
<laughs> three quarterbacks. Three quarterbacks at him. <laughs> three quarterbacks. <laughs> Sam Darnold, pretty good quarterback, huh? Yeah, he's pretty solid. And we saw we did that Rose Bowl game on radio last year. That game was fun watching Darnold. The last be on the catch, well defended by South Carolina true freshman Sherrod Green. Had a late offer from Alabama, but State committed to South Carolina. He made the tackle. Another third down here for the Wolfpack. It'll be interesting to watch Ryan Finley on this throw. That throw out to the left came out very fluttery. First, really kind of a wounded duck that we've seen from him today. I wonder if that left ankle is bothering him as he tries to push his weight through on one of these throws. Let's see if he can drive it down the field here on a third and long. He told us when we met with him the other day that the deep ball was his biggest area of weakness a year ago. Going to need to throw this one down the field, but he can't even get it off. Sacked at the 20-yard line. D.J. Wanham has been all over the field. This defensive line for South Carolina balling today. I mean, Wanham just coming from the left-hand side. This play just took too long. You see Finley hitch, 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 hitch. At some point, you have to understand when you need to cut it loose. Wanham did win inside, but didn't win initially. I wonder if Finley, obviously, Will Muschat made some adjustments at halftime. Lamont's hit. That's no fly, apparently. Wow, didn't look like they gave Lamont's any room there. Yeah, those adjustments, though, like I referenced for South Carolina, man, they're paying off in the biggest way possible. It's South Carolina football, and the Gamecocks have a two-touchdown lead over NC State, middle of the third quarter. A lot of great games going on right now over on ABC, Michigan, Florida. You have Florida State, Alabama tonight. You can watch it all on the ESPN app. If you're at a game, you can watch the app, watch games, check out scores. Even if you're calling a game, Tom, you can watch other games, right? You're not even paying attention to this Sorry, game. What? What? Which game are you watching, Tom? Uh, right now, I'm at halftime. Halftime of uh, Michigan Florida, 17-13. I was going to give him this credit for multitasking, yet he's not even focused on this game. Incompletion. They're trying to hit first down in space there. Trying to get the hand, the ball in Hayden Hurst's hand for the first time in a while. Yeah, I haven't had many opportunities to get him involved. Of course, the touchdown, the deep touchdown. Devo Samuel was actually intended the way it was drawn up to be a throwback to Hurst. So trying to feature him these last few drives and just haven't had the chance. You see that NC State is trying to take him away and make him a point of emphasis defensively. Big series defensively for the Wolfpack. Second 10 on the 36. And South Carolina's going to run the football. Dowdle finally goes down. Chubb eventually on the tackle. Sean Boone had him at the ankles. We haven't called Chubb's name a whole lot in this game. Made a couple plays in the first half and quiet so far in the third. Had a few near misses though. Jake Bentley actually converted two third downs with his legs. And had it been a half yard here or there, Chubb would have had two sacks on both of those two plays. So he's been in the backfield, just hasn't made his presence felt yet. But keep an eye on the All-American number nine right here off the edge on a third and long. They move him inside there on that third down. They throw away from him to Edwards on the screen. And he is bottled up at the 39-yard uh, 39 yard line forcing a punt that was big for NC State defensively that time. I like that call right there Greg because Will Muschamp from a defensive perspective he sees a long field and his defense is playing great football right now so why not give yourself a chance in the kicking game to keep that defense fired up with the momentum and force NC State to go the length they have struggled to put together any type of effective efficiency here in the third quarter. That and NC State's defensive line's great pass rushing group, so his screen makes all the sense in the world. Right now, looking like NC State might take a chance to run at this one. Hope to hold up. He shanked it. But he gets a decent bounce. 
They will be down around the 21 yard line. Team building by South Carolina in the offseason, an early wake up call to get to Fort Jackson for military training exercises. If you're going to put in the hard work, you got to let the kids have some fun too. The trip to the lake house. <laughs> Saban did this with you guys all the time, right? You guys would go in the lake and go tubing. Believe it or not, Coach Saban lives on the lake, so I did go tubing did, off the back okay. of Coach Saban's boat. Except I was a little scared. He got a little diabolical from time to time with me on the tube. That's because you uh, weren't wearing your floaties. That's true. So maybe Muschamp got it from Saban. They well, coached together at LSU, won a championship. That's true. Jimbo Fisher on that staff as well. Saban and Fisher square off tonight. Samuels trying to get outside South Carolina all over that it's a loss on the play of about two yards DJ Brunson there and Tom I've been really impressed with how this South Carolina defense in the second half how they have not gotten out of position they've had been good in pursuit they've contained right they've been stout against the run they of course forced the turnover very good looking group right now with the starters out there. Travaris Robinson, defensive coordinator. I don't know if that was a broken player design. Finley throws into triple coverage, and it's knocked away by D.J. Smith. And Tom kind of getting back to it. I mean, they um, there's no uncovered wide receivers. There's very little yards after catch. The adjustments that were made by Will Muschamp and Travaris Robinson defensively have been outstanding in the second half. I will say this, too, as well, guys, is uh, remember in the first quarter when we talked about this defense coming off of that 14 play drive saying there's no way they can survive this game doing that and they have completely made a reversal of fortune in that regard 14 plays this quarter for NC State zero yards of offense here's third and 12 and a flag down dead ball foul it's going to be third and 17 this now ball start offense 67 five yard penalty remains third down they're going to get Justin Witt the red shirt freshman for a false start and the reason why he false started he had number four Bryson Allen Williams the linebacker slash defensive end for the Gamecocks who is a handful coming off the edge very very fast so Witt tried to get a bit of a head start and the officials called him out on it we had a feeling South Carolina was going to be potent offensively, but the defense really been outstanding in this game. They're able to get to Emizi before he reaches the first down, but another penalty marker back at the 20-yard line. Jamarcus King was in coverage that time for the Gamecocks. If it's on NC State, you would imagine South Carolina will just decline. Or do you back him up and give him another shot? I, I just decline to make him punts. Fourth down. Ineligible downfield. Offense number 71. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. It's twice we've seen an eligible downfield today in a relatively clean game. It's been kind of a point of emphasis the last couple years by the officiating group. This group being from the SEC, making sure that linemen don't, don't get downfield and some of those RPO concepts is very difficult on an official. Excellent punt. LeMans, what is he thinking? Muffs the ball and is able to recover it at the three-yard line. Tried to catch it over his head. The 69-yard punt and almost a game changer. A disaster. But he was able to cover it up back at the three-yard line. Chris LeMans tried to make a play, but he really didn't have to. Just let it go. We got another game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta on Monday. We got Florida State, Alabama tonight at that brand new facility in Atlanta. That is number 25, Tennessee and Georgia Tech. Monday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN South Carolina backed up inside its five after Chris Lamont tried to feel that punt able to get out of the end zone is Dowdle but he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage big Andreas Bryant at 325 pounds at least that's what he's listed at they might be kind with that able to make the tackle 
This is NC State has given up a couple plays through the air for sure. But this defensive line has held stout a majority of the day. Some of the longest runs from South Carolina have been on quarterback scrambles. But they haven't given up much so far to Dowdle. Only nine rushes for 22 yards, less than two and a half yards to carry. Bentley from the end zone has Edwards and a nice open field tackle by Nick McLeod. Going to bring up third down here. Do you bring a little pressure here if you're NC State? Try to get after Bentley, or do you just play it safe? I wouldn't. I would actually drop back here and make Bentley throw it underneath. Now, I know it's only third and four, and they might, they might maybe extend the ball for a first down, but I wouldn't bring the pressure for fear of a missed tackle and a long gain when your defense is held up pretty decent for a majority of it. Plus, Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator for NC State, he brought pressure early in the game, and South Carolina had success on third down. But when they dropped back, they haven't been quite as good. Bentley rolling out, and that pass off the mark. It was short of the line to gain anyway, had Shai Smith caught it. NC State brought a little pressure that time, fourth down. I just don't understand that. As a right-handed passer, rolling to your left into pressure is extremely difficult to do. So why, do coaches around? why do coaches always call that? Though? Well, that time, they're on the right hash, so they want more field to work with. But if you're not on the left hash, that play should be dead altogether on third down. You have 100 plays in your playbook that you could run in that situation that would be more effective than that. Now, I love it if you're on the left hash rolling to the right, but right hash rolling left, it's so hard on a right-hander. See if NC State comes after this punt. Charlton's first year punting the football. Had a penalty flag down. The play clock at zero. And they have game. Kicking team. Half the distance. Fourth down. Can't, can't make that mistake if you're South Carolina. Again, you've got a new punter this year. Sophomore Joseph Charlton. Don't give the long snapper as much room, and he got a dangerous returner in Naheem Hines, who's standing in South Carolina territory. Not a good kick. Hines fields it. Signal for a fair catch at the 46-yard line. That's where NC State will operate. This is the chance now for the Wolfpack. They've been hoping for it. All started with that muff punt by LeMans. NC State in the third quarter, no offense. South Carolina making the most of turnovers. 14 points off turnovers, plus they have a kickoff return for a touchdown. They got a 14-point lead on the team that many felt was a dark horse candidate to contend for an ACC title. Doesn't mean that if they lose this game, they can't. But this is the kind of game NC State has lost way too often the last three, four seasons. Yeah, it's very disconcerting to see them come out flat in the second half. But right now, have a little bit of momentum. Maybe you take a shot downfield. Better run play to Hines through a crease. And the hole closes at the 40, a six-yard run for Hines. Final minute of the third quarter. Isn't this exactly what we talked about, though, guys? Uh, coming into the season, throughout the summer, leading up to this game, everything about this Wolfpack roster says contender. A lot of upperclassmen, a lot of registered seniors and juniors, and they can't have this type of lapse for an entire quarter to put them behind 14 points. You're just not going to be able to pull it off unless you flip momentum here in a hurry. On second and four, they'll run Hines to the right side. Stutter steps and finds a running lane inside the 25-yard line. Down to the 21, a 19-yard run by the track star, Naheem Hines. Really nice run right here by Hines. Look at him put that right foot in the ground and go north and south. The track star, like you said, showing off some of that speed for the big run. All ACC in the 100 meter. He's not afraid of power between the tackles either. We've seen that a lot today. He gets six yards on that play to end the third quarter. NC State on the move, but trailing South Carolina by 14 points. A lot of talk about which conference is better. ACC, SEC. Right now it's the SEC in front by 14.
of the best coaches in college football. Jimbo Fisher once worked for Nick Saban. He'll square off tonight. You know what I learned today? I didn't know about Jimbo Fisher, according to Nick Saban. Got a great jump shot. That's what I heard. Three. I heard that too. I heard yeah. Nick Saban's a good distributor on the on the perimeter too. Pretty well done. Had both coaches on game day today. Gillespie trying to find a hole. He'll be short of the line to gain, so it'll be third down and one here for NC State. That's why both of those coaches want to recruit guys that play multiple sports, man, especially basketball. <laughs> I remember Bob Stoops when he was recruiting DeMarco Murray. He decided to offer him because he was at a basketball game. He was the best player on the court. Wow. Third and one. Gillespie has the first down. Rags defenders to the seven yard line. So it's first and goal here for NC State. That's a nice strong run and a nice surge up front for NC State's offensive line. You see a lot of hands on the hips of South Carolina defensive linemen right now. That tells you they're a little bit fatigued. Now NC State about to snap their 70, 70 second offensive play. You have to wonder if fatigue will start to play a factor here as the fourth quarter progresses. It's amazing. They've run 30 more plays than their opponent. They're down two scores. Make that close to one score. We'll see where they mark Hines down. Tackled at the one as he got upended by Brunson. You said he ran track. Did he run hurdles? His twin Look sister at that. does. His twin sister is actually a hurdler at NC State. What an acrobatic play. Ouch. They run him again, and he won't get there. It'll be third and goal. Bryce and Allen Williams got him first. Surprised we haven't seen Gillespie. Here he comes. He's the bigger of the two backs that NC State's going to be using today. He's 225 pounds, number 25. He specializes in short yardage and north-south north -south rushing. Expect well, him to potentially get it here. With all the field goal problems, you got to be in four down, right? Absolutely. Down two scores, fourth quarter. They're going to run Gillespie. Able to muscle his way to the goal line. No signal yet. The ball's on the ground. They ruled that not only was he down, but he didn't get into the end zone. Boy, I thought he did with that surge. Forward progress was stopped really close. Man, that was a grown man tackle defensively I mean there is not a lot of defenders that can stop 225 pounds breathing fire straight at you Sky Moore can I know Gamecock fans are fired up to see him back on the field for stops like that led the team in tackles his first three seasons and missed last year with a neck injury he's had some big hits today and NC State going for it on fourth and goal Jalen Samuels is the back. Play action. Samuels adjusts and makes the catch. Touchdown, NC State. Well, with him in the game, he have options. You can hand it to him, or you can throw it to him. Or he could throw it. He threw a touchdown last year. What an incredible catch by Jalen Samuels. Not a pretty throw from Ryan Finley. Not one that he'll remember fondly throwing it that far behind the intended wide receiver. But your receiver always makes you right when he's a star. And that's exactly what Jalen Samuels was on that play. Again, it started with that muff punt by Chris LeMans that pushed the ball back inside the five. Then NC State got field position off a bad punt. They marched down the field and score. And with Carson Wise's extra point, it's a seven-point game. Call this play the 321 loop pass right. You fake underneath, you run your running back right to the front pylon, and you cash it in for a touchdown. There's a lot of you. There's only one of me. They are not confused. It's been a thrilling opening game here in Charlotte. We've had a lot of huge plays like this. Debo Samuel, you got fantasy league? I got to think about 97 yard kickoff return to start the game. He had six rushing touchdowns last year, too. A couple of receiving touchdowns in this one. Good run there by Ryan Finley and an answer for NC State. Then a little trickery setting up the tight end Cole Cook. 
for a reception downfield. And how about this play? First the throw by Bentley. Then watch the one-handed stab by Debo Samuel. His third touchdown overall on the day. Great reaction by Jake Bentley. But NC State with a big touchdown here in the fourth to pull it in seven. And there's Debo. They've kicked it away from him ever since. And they'll kick it deep here. They do have a little wind at their back. And it goes through the end zone. Touchback. NC State with six plays of 15 yards or more. South Carolina's got five. And then that kickoff return for a touchdown. But the last two possessions for South Carolina, three and outs. Yeah, they've forced two turnovers from NC State, too. So, yes, they have a seven-point lead. But NC State's offense has been a little bit more consistent than South Carolina so far to this point. Now it's about whether or not Jake Bentley can put the team on his back, which he's done before in the fourth quarter against a really good opponent. Interesting, they got Tyson Williams in the game at running back. We haven't seen him at all today. He's a transfer from North Carolina, but he's in there now. Bentley's pass incomplete. Samuel could not hang on. Jake Bentley, a true sophomore quarterback who skipped his senior year of high school to attend South Carolina. His dad is on the staff as the running backs coach. Bentley was going to redshirt last year until midseason. They pull the redshirt. He ends up starting the final seven games. Throws for almost 400 yards in the bowl game. There's his dad, Bobby, the running backs coach. Jake went to the Manning camp this summer. A lot of promise coming in, and that talent has been on display today. Second and ten. His pass caught by Sky or Shy Smith. Well played by McLeod. Shoved out of bounds. After a game of about four. And this is a big third down for South Carolina. Starting to feel the momentum leaking away from you just a little bit. The Wolfpack fans are getting into it as loud as they've been at any point here in the second half. Kurt Roper here, the offensive coordinator. Got to find a big conversion. When you need a play, where do you go here on third and six? In this particular formation, the way they're lined up right now, I like my chances one-on-one -on -one down here at the bottom for number 89, Brian Edwards, who's got a lot of game. Instead, Bentley throwing a deep ball far sideline, and it's picked up. Intercepted by Jonathan Alston, playing his first game as a corner. Spent three years as a wide receiver, sat out last year to learn his new position, and he makes a huge play. What a great play by Jonathan Alston. Knowing that they were going vertical, the reason why I did not like that matchup at the top. Yes, Debo Samuel is your best receiver, but he's just under six foot. Jonathan Alston over 6-1. Considerable height advantage, and it results in an interception for the Wolfpack. ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation View. Watch the biggest moments in sports. Try it free today. NC State with its first takeaway of the day, and the Wolfpack down seven with the ball on their 31 yard line. 11 minutes remaining. Out in space to Samuels. Past the 35 and out to about the 38 yard line. Fellas, you can really feel the air just coming out of the balloon on this South Carolina sideline. You can see it in body language. You can see it on the faces of the players. Coaches are pacing nervously. Remember, with three minutes to go in the third quarter, NC State had 14 offensive plays in zero yards. Now all the momentum is on the red sideline, and they can feel it over there. It's a totally different stadium right now than it was 10 minutes ago. Play action here. Finley down the sideline. Beautiful grab. C.J. Riley inbounds, makes the catch at the 41-yard line. Make sure that he got down in bounds, secures the catch. You can see clearly that left foot comes down. The ball doesn't move at all. Really nice catch from the 6'4 freshman with a lot of promise. Runs a 4'4", 840, fastest on the team. Here's Gillespie hitting the carry, 8 of 2. Boy, this would be huge 
for Ryan Finley, who is trying to win over his teammates. He won the starting job last year from Jalen McClendon, who was a team favorite, and Finley didn't get there until June. He was a grad transfer from Boise State. It was an up and down season. This would be certainly a way to win your teammates over. You leap your club back to a victory when you've been down by 14 points, if you can pull it off. Tried to tie it up here on this drop. Second and eight. Finley has a receiver. It's Lewis. He'll come up short of the first down by about three yards. Yeah, and Eli Drinkwitz trying to make this third and manageable. This is a big third down right here in plus territory. Could potentially very easily be four down territory. So wouldn't be surprised to see Drinkwitz lead toward the run right here. And then know that he can come back on fourth down and potentially get it, knowing their issues that they have at kicker. Already missed a field goal in this game. Missed eight field goals last year. Be about a 50-yarder anyway. Third and three. Samuels comes open, has the first down. There's a flag. They might get NC State here for a pick. I think that's what they're going to get. If you look at the man on the top of the bunch. He doesn't run a route. He just blocks. The guy right over the top of him, allowing for that pick play to occur. Pass interference. Offense number 48. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains third down. Just watch right here what happens with Cole Luke. He just runs right up and blocks. That's not a route has to figure out a way to make that look like you're intending to get open. Instead, Cole Cook just drove his feet and made it an easy call for the official. Finley with that heavily taped left foot after he was brought down, got bent over on that left leg. He's toughed it out. Got to get to the 31-yard line here to move the sticks. It's a screen, and down goes Himes. Brunson tripped him up first. Just a massive penalty. You have third and short with so much momentum. Then you have a 15-yard penalty that backs you up, Tom. And then all of a sudden, you're punting, giving South Carolina yeah. a lot of momentum. No question, Greg. And, and when you're doing that pick in the rub route, if you're the receiver and you're trying to pick and rub off of that, we'll get back to it here in just one second. LeBons lets that one go. You this try time. and pick and rub. It's a good punt, good recovery. You try and pick and rub. If I'm the receiver, all right, and the offense is going this way, if my shoulders are going parallel like that, I'm going to get called for a block. If I'm here, I'm fine. Although, Ed, and we've seen some other top 10 teams struggle in the first half of games here this opening week. We'll see if SC turns it on. We haven't seen any struggle other than Wisconsin at home against a group of five team that lost everybody, including their coach. But don't press the panic button yet. Bentley throws complete. Debo Samuel has the 20. Eight of 18 yards. Nice solid play right here. An RPO. Play was actually a run play, but they called a slant to Debo Samuel. And if there's no one in that slant window, Jake Bentley has freedom to throw it. Great job of recognizing the space that Samuel had and connecting on a nice play. They go to Samuel again. This time it's off the mark. They've targeted Samuel the last three passes. The first time it was an interception. And you look at their last three drives. Now they've had some poor field position, which hasn't helped. But punt, punt, and then that pick that we just mentioned. Yeah, they have to find something. Jake Bentley, the last few drives, hasn't been as accurate. He's missed a bubble route. He's missed low on a quick out route. 
he needs to dial it back in because this offense the entire season is going to be predicated on him being accurate and making good decisions. NC State stack on the box here for second and ten they run Dowdle and Dowdle only gets a yard. NC State expecting run that time. Bradley Chubb there with the stop for the Wolfpack. So you got third and long here with the clock at 7 13 and counting. Keep in mind, this is huge, guys, because South Carolina in their punt game has been abysmal today. They have not been able to flip field position when they've had to, and they have struggled to convert when they haven't had manageable third downs. This is a huge play for the Gamecock offense. A lot of pressure on the true sophomore, too. Hasn't been in this situation a lot. Started seven games last year. As a true freshman, he's just learning how to play college football. He gets drilled and sacked. It was Alston on a corner blitz, getting to the quarterback to force the punt. Alston ended the last Gamecock drive. He's going to end the next one as well. Excellent call by Dave Huxtable. Early in the game, he brought pressure with three defenders right up the middle between the two South Carolina guards. Now opting for pressure to the boundary on the weak side to Jake Bentley's blind side. Jake Bentley didn't see it coming and had absolutely no answer. Results in a big sack. There's the pump they were looking for. Hines trying to track it down. He does back at the 18-yard line. Keeps his balance past the 30. Hines still going at the 40. All the way back to midfield. You think you have the field flipped on a punt that went about 70 yards. And then the guy returns it for 30 yards. Unbelievable. Great punt, but sometimes you can outkick that coverage, and that's what happened there. More college football tomorrow night on ABC with number 22 West Virginia taking on Virginia Tech. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Not a good day for the Big 12 today with Texas going down, losing to Maryland. See if West Virginia can get it done tomorrow. Oklahoma State looked good on Thursday night. How will Oklahoma be this year with Lincoln Riley taking over for Bob Stoops? I'm not sure a game against UTEP is any indicator as to whether or not they're going to be in play at season's end, but a 42-point lead right now looks pretty good. Question about Oklahoma, are they going to go back to being the air raid? Are they going to continue to have that balance, but a lot of new faces in the backfield? No Mixon, no Pirine. But they do have Baker Mayfield, a Heisman candidate, last year and will be again this year, we imagine. NC State with possession. Ryan Finley has had an excellent day. He's thrown for almost 400 yards. But his team's down seven, inside six to play. Finley throws complete to Myers for a first down. And a gain of 12. They've lost 11 straight games when they trail by 14 points or more in the second half. It's been three years since they've had a comeback win in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's an impressive stat, let alone 14 points in the fourth quarter. They've won this quarter so far, though. Incomplete on the pass intended for Harmon, who wants interference by Jamarcus King, but will not get a flag. Finley had one-on-one -on -one coverage down that right sideline, could not connect. We've talked about it. Finley really tried to make this point of emphasis down the field. I think you could have very easily called pass interference right there. That's an easy call. That's to an me, easy That's a no-brainer. Got his jersey ripping, and you can see the jersey come below the shoulder pad there. That's pass interference. I don't care what anybody says. Instead, it's second and ten for NC State. Finley finds Samuels. Trying to set up blocks for him on that wide receiver screen. Gain of four to the 36-yard line. No, Greg, as we approach the five-minute mark here, you and I were talking about defensive fatigue for South Carolina, the lack of depth. No doubt they've made great adjustments here in the second half to apply pressure, play better in the secondary, but from field level, they're just hanging on right now from a numbers standpoint. At some point, Luke, they have to make an adjustment to stop number one. Yep. Jalen Samuels in the slot. Lined up against a true freshman in Jemias Williams. 
They just motioned Jacoby Myers away from him, so he's matched up one-on-one -on -one now with a freshman. Finley looking that way. Samuels adjusts, can't come up with the play, incomplete. Jemias Williams, the true freshman, in coverage. And so it's fourth down, and it's go time for NC State. Yeah, you knew exactly where the ball was going to go. Yep. Jalen Samuels has 13 receptions and has been targeted 16 times, several of which on third down. You see that ball pop up and incomplete. Still an opportunity, though, in plus territory to potentially get it here on fourth down. Do you, target him, do you target him a 16 time? Absolutely. The freshman's there again, 21 on one. Keep, just keep an eye on number one. Going to call a timeout, but they have the same matchup there. Fourth and five. Two timeouts remaining for NC State. Let's take a break and check them with Ed and Burke in the studio. All right, Dave, just want to tell you about our PlayStation View multi view. Appalachian State and Georgia should be coming up right here on ESPN. It's now underway. It's currently on ESPN News. And Michigan and Florida is through three. The Wolverines currently leading it by nine against the Gators team that's won 27 straight season openers. So Wilton Spade and company have the lead. We'll see if they can hold on on ABC. Dave, back to you. Before we get to this play, are you surprised by Michigan being up by nine against Florida? I'm not. I mean, obviously, so much has been made of the suspensions for the Florida Gators. Ten guys that are not suited up, nor are they in Dallas to participate in this game. But the problem remains. When is Florida going to identify a quarterback? Felipe Frank started today, but by all accounts, he is not played well under any circumstance but one guy that has played well at quarterback today is Ryan Finley and he's got a chance here on fourth down to keep the drive alive right now looks like South Carolina might be bringing a little bit of pressure not a lot of guys deep in the secondary and they bring Samuels in motion here he's the go-to guy fourth and five for NC State Finley for Samuels makes the catch stretches out lost the ball they say that he caught it, and then he was down. Did he get the first down? It's all going to depend on the spot. They mark him short, but when they go back and look at this, I thought when he stretched the ball out, he got it across the 30-yard line. It was very, very close. You can see Jalen Samuels right there telling the official, look, I stretched it out with my right arm. Of course, we have to say the yellow line is not official, but it's pretty darn close. Let's see here with that left arm. He's not down there. He's still alive. And it appears he got it to the 30 yard line. Will that be enough, though, to move the chains? They're coming out to measure. But again, every play is reviewed. This angle is going to be tough to see exactly where that ball came down, but it appears to me as though the nose of the football was far enough. He didn't get it based on measurement. We'll see if instant replay, though, has the final say. They're going to have to take a look at this. That spot to me looks like it's off by about a third of a yard maybe even a half of a yard based on the replay that we saw. He's down there, and it, again, it looks like the ball yeah. is at the 30. The ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the line of game. The previous play is under further review. Now, the other question is, even if he gets to the 30, is that enough to move the, the change? Right. They may have to reset the ball and measure again. And is there indisputable video evidence to change where the ball is going to be spotted. A lot of things to take into account right here. A big review for the officials. And you saw where the line judge was positioned. He was behind the receiver. He wasn't down the line on that play, so it was impossible for him to rightly spot the football. Tom, you were at field level, standing just a couple yards away. Right from where Samuels went down. Did it appear from your angle as though he got the first down? He, when the hand came down and the ball came down and came loose, it was right just prior to the 30-yard line. 
So it did look like that. The official, if you watch the official's eyes in his line of sight, he's looking at Jalen Samuels' hip, and that's where he's spotted. But look how far back he is. He's five yards behind. How can he see down the line whether Samuel stretches it out? Right. You guys notice they ran the same play, two plays in a row. I don't see how he can make an accurate judgment on where this ball is going to be spotted based right. on where he was. Now, he wasn't out of position, but it makes sense that the ball would be a little bit off based on what it appears from the camera yeah. angle that we have that goes right down the line. This looks like a first down to me. It looked as though he got plenty of room in he's between the mark. He spotted his hip, didn't he, Greg? He did. He's, yeah. Well, he, he spotted the elbow or Correct. the hip or yeah. some part instead of the body of the ball. instead of the nose of the football, right. which should be the area in which the mark was made. Now, if this is not overturned, if you're NC State, the game's not over. You, you have two timeouts left. There's four minutes and 34 seconds left. It, it makes for Will Muschamp and his coaching staff. They have some tough decisions on it if it's their football. Do they just try to run the ball here or do they stick with what's worked today and that's balance balance because they haven't had a lot of success running the football today. Their leading rusher is averaging only two point three yards per carry in Rico Dowdle. So I think you got to keep calling your offense but I'll be really surprised if in fact that South Carolina offense stays on the field. I have a feeling their defense going to come back out for a fresh set of downs. Again you have. Uh, SEC officiating crew the replay crew is the ACC and in the uh, game operations center in Greensboro they're helping out a collaborative effort with James Carter who's the referee for the SEC and then you have obviously the ACC replay crew in the booth here at Bank of America Stadium. Here's the call. After review the ruling on the field stands. First down. Well, I, I'm just surprised that they didn't respot the football, though. Right. I'm really surprised because, based on the angles that we had, and they weren't perfect, but it appeared, without a shadow of a doubt, that that arm, when it was outstretched, the nose of the football touched at least the 30-yard line. I'm shocked at that conclusion. So South Carolina takes over, and they will throw it here. Hurst makes the catch, but he's going to lose yardage. They tried to get the ball to Hayden Hurst, who's been quiet all day, and NC State did a great job defending it. Sean Boone makes the play for the Wolfpack. He was a starter at safety last year. Now he's playing nickel and some linebacker. It's a loss of two. And Greg, they can't run it. Unfortunately, that is their run game right there, and if they don't right. get it into the hands of their best playmakers, it can at least get upfield. Their only hope is to keep that clock running. Only 29 yards on 18 attempts running the football against the stout front seven for the Wolfpack. They're going to try to run it though. Dowdle found a little bit of running room. Bradley Chubb jumps out of the pile there at the 35 yard line. NC State will call a timeout here. It's a six yard run, so they get half of it back, and the Wolfpack will have one timeout remaining all right regardless Greg and Tom of how this game finishes and, and who wins this game what do we think we've learned about each team today because NC State was a darling for many people picking them to be a contender in the ACC and a lot of people thought South Carolina was an improved team and maybe could contend in the SEC East. yeah well first of all NC State they've made a number of mistakes two turnovers and a special teams touchdown so they have to eliminate those mistakes but I think they have found something in Ryan Finley. This guy appears to have taken the next step. He's developed the rapport with the wide receivers that he didn't have last year, and the results are staggering. Yeah, 28 points so far, but if you look at the passing production, he's approaching 400 yards through the air. He's made good decisions. He's been smart with the football. And he's been very, very accurate. So, Tom, if I'm NC State, I feel really good about my quarterback situation. Yeah, you really do, and you, you're a veteran group that you're going to have to lean on here because the question still remains. Can NC State win a close game? Can they win a game against somebody that they're supposed to? Can they win a game against somebody that maybe they're not? They should beat South Carolina on talent here, but that's not how it's gone so far. 
Third and six, Bentley rolling out. And he's going to get taken down well short of the line to gain. In fact, loses yardage. Contavious Street, he's one of the biggest guys on the team. The guy squats 700 pounds. He's also an athletic freak in terms of his running ability and jumping ability, and he takes down Bentley there for a loss. Not a smart play by Jake Bentley right there. Nothing was there. You stay in bounds. Force NC State to think about the clock. Instead, he gets tackled, gets a hit, which you could avoid easily by sliding, and he stops the clock and gives NC State new life with that additional timeout that they would have had they would have been forced to burn had he been tackled inbounds. They get another good punt here. Hines fields it at the 16. Stays inbounds past the 30. Fumble the ball. NC State recovers it though at the 35 yard line. Bodine recovers the fumble at the 35 for NC State. Let's go to Adnan while we have a moment and check in. Thank you, Dave. Remember 10 years ago, Appalachian State shocked the world, knocked off Michigan. Right now they're playing Georgia. It's over on ESPN News. Bulldogs are turning a lot of familiar faces, especially in the backfield. Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle, Jacob Eason at quarterback. You can watch it on ESPN News and also on the ESPN app before it's here on ESPN. Back to you, Dave. All right, should be an exciting finish here, Adnan, with the ball in Ryan Finley's hand. We talked about his growth, his maturity, him winning the team over after coming here late last summer and beating out team favorite Jalen McClendon. Meanwhile, replay is looking at the spot to see if the runner Hines stepped out. It looked like he did there. To put the ball back near the 28, cost him about seven yards. I don't know from that angle, is it indisputable? Video evidence, can you see foot on white there? And the other angle, I think, gives you a little bit more of a view as to whether or not part of that foot does, in fact, hit the sideline. I think he's out of bounds right there, which would bring the ball back yep. about six or seven yards. After review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the 28-yard line. It'll be first down, NC State. Now, Tom talked earlier about the close losses for NC State, beating teams you should beat like Boston College and East Carolina, even if you play poorly, somehow winning in the end. They didn't do that last year. But they had a chance to win at Clemson, a missed field goal as time expired from 33 yards, and they lose in overtime. A dropped interception against Florida State, they could have won that game. And now they're faced with a situation where they trail by seven against a South Carolina team that's played very well today as a kickoff return for a touchdown. Couple of takeaways, and they have to go 72 yards to tie the game. Finley hits Lewis, scoots out of play near the line to gain at the 37 yard line. Keep in mind, you go back to Jake Bentley going out of bounds. There should be an additional 30 seconds off the clock right now, and there's not. NC State's got one timeout left. These smart receivers, when that ball goes to the perimeter, remember the end of, this, of the first half. A lot of real estate between those corners at South Carolina and receivers at NC State. Out of an empty set, Finley on second and short, lobbing it up, and it was on target for drop by Myers. Jacoby Myers looked like he was going to pull that in on a great throw by Finley. Beautiful throw to the outside shoulder. Ryan Finley said he really wanted to improve his deep ball accuracy when it came to this season and he put one on the money right there Jacoby Myers he's had a nice day today drops the big play opportunity third down and one he'll keep it on the ground Hines pass midfield he fumbles it again South Carolina recovers it at the 42 It was stripped by true freshman Jemias Williams and recovered by Jamarcus King. Take a look. Is any part of that body down? It appears as though it was Ooh. before that ball comes out. First glance would say he's likely down by contact. Now keep in mind, 
has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn. His, now his elbow's down, and his butt is down, and then the ball comes out. Problem is, from that angle, you can't really see the ball if the yeah. ball's moving at can't all, right? Can't see it, yeah. Well, we get this angle here. I think he's got it tucked. The ruling on the field as a fumble recovered by the defense. The play is under further review. I know you're not supposed to overturn a call unless you have 100% certainty and you can see the ball. I think you can see enough of the ball when he goes down to be assured that he had it tucked. So there he's down. And then the ball pops out. But you can't see the ball. Did you see enough of it though on the other angle enough of it to assume that he's got it in his hand or is there still doubt there's still doubt from me Tom did you have a chance to take a look at it from where you're standing on the field I did I, and that is the problem in all likelihood the ball is tucked but if you can't see the football in its entirety from when he gets tackled by Jamias Williams 21 and the attempt is stripped and then goes down you cannot by rule overturn that it doesn't matter what you think the ball is doing that's a tough tough call for this replay booth they're going to have to adhere to the direct letter of the law if there's not a better angle to support that the ball it's got to be indisputable Indiv video yep. evidence beyond all doubt but again I, I think you see enough of the ball not from this angle there was another angle we showed you I think you see enough of the ball as he's going down that he's got it that he has possession should be able to see it here there he's got the ball and he's down he's got see but you can't tell for certain that he's down right there because of the defender that slid in front. So this is a very very difficult call but I think you could combine the two angles this angle here which shows the left leg down right right there think about it guys there was far more evidence to overturn that spot on the previous series than there is to overturn this and they didn't overturn that I think this should get overturned I think he should be down and sometimes when they overturn a ruling they take time because they have to adjust the clock. They have to figure out where to spot the ball. And I think that's what's happening here because they're writing down information of where to spot the ball, how much time on the clock. I think this is going to overturn. After review, the runner was down at the 49 yard line. The first down, NC State. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 241. 241 on the game clock. By all accounts, it appeared like he was down. Now, there is some language to where you have to have conclusive evidence to overturn. And if you were to look at those two angles side by side, it would have been pretty obvious that Hines was down by contact prior to that ball coming out. A great effort by Jemias Williams. But a great run by Hines to give NC State a fresh set of downs in Gamecock territory. That was on a third and one. He picked up 14 yards. First down at the 49 of South Carolina. NC State still with a timeout. Finley stepping up. Throws high. Over the head of the intended receiver. Incomplete. And here is the split screen. From both angles. You can see that Hines is down on the left. And you see the ball is still in his possession on the right. This is what led the officials to overturn the ruling on the field, therefore giving the ball back to NC State for first and ten. On second and ten, Samuels makes the catch, but an immediate tackle by TJ Brunson. He grabbed the rubber band. The contraption, as Tom described it, that they put on the back of the left leg of Samuels. That's how he made the tackle. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Trying to tackle down. him, I'd be grabbing anything I could. Huge third down right here for the Wolf Pack. If I'm Ryan Finley. I'm trying to find number one again. He's been the go-to guy all day long. 15 receptions, several of which on third down. And he's aligned in the slot to the top. Ford on territory for NC State. South Carolina brings pressure. Finley down the field. Broken up by King, but a flag. 
He went for Kelvin Harmon. And Jamarcus King interfered with Harmon. It'll be a first down, NC State. Pass interference. Defense number seven. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, clearly, Jamarcus King never tries to turn around. I know the throw is a little underthrown. And Kelvin Harmon has a right to get to it. King does not allow him to get to it, which results in the pass interference call. Correct call by the official. So 1.32 on the game clock. Still a timeout left for NC State. Clock stops and all first down, so there's plenty of time here for the Wolfpack. South Carolina rushes just three here. Finley climbing the pocket, throwing it downfield incomplete, going for Harmon. Boy, that was any more underthrown. I think Lamont's picks that off for South Carolina. Second and ten. Very got, dangerous throw right there, Tom. Yeah, it really was. And you had a lot of over, you had over the top and underneath coverage. And, and you consider NC State second and ten, one timeout. They haven't had to use their timeout, so the pass interference call and that incompletion. So they don't have to be in a hurry here. Just have a sense of urgency. Be needy, not greedy. You guys have talked a lot about Samuels. There he is at the 30 yard line, top of your screen. Finley instead goes for Harmon underneath, and he's close to a first down, about a yard and a half short. Clock is moving. NC State will hold that timeout. Third down and one. Gillespie, the big back, is in. Would expect maybe a run right up the middle here. And there it is. Gillespie. Nice job being patient, getting the first down. South Carolina trying to strip the ball. Able to keep his feet moving, bounce it to the outside enough to move the chains inside the 20 yard line. The clock will stop momentarily to reset the sticks. 59 seconds to go. South Carolina's got to be very careful how they play a deep throw here because of the back shoulder throw. These corners need to be very aware. Finley. Throws it out of bounds. So 45 seconds left. Second down and 10. Ryan Finley has thrown 60 passes, 404 yards in this game. And South Carolina's defense has been on the field for 94 snaps. Considering they're a group that does not have a remarkable amount of depth, the fact that they're playing at such a high level late is very impressive. On second and ten. Finley looking over the middle. It's caught at the ten yard line. Gillespie out of the backfield has a first down which will stop the clock. He'll get rid of the chains because it's first and goal. And NC State will keep that final timeout. 35 seconds remaining. Finley looking. Throwing end zone into traffic. It's broken off. He was trying for Harmon. D.J. Smith deflected it. Dangerous pass by Finley. Very dangerous pass. You have three defenders and two wide receivers. More often than not, that's going to end negatively for the offense. Finley getting a little greedy right there. Trying to feed it to the corner of the end zone. And Sky Moore is hurt and... I know South Carolina fans hate to see that. This kid has battled back from a neck injury that cost him all of last season. Led the team in tackles each of his first three years in South Carolina. Hopefully, this is something that will just keep him out for a play. Such a great competitor. Thought twice about going to the NFL. Decided to come back to school. Try to lead his team to a championship. Yeah, and remember the last time the Gamecocks were in this stadium. They were playing against the North Carolina Tar Heels and Sky Moore had two interceptions in the end zone to seal that one for the Gamecocks. So he almost had one right there. Ryan Finley got a little greedy to the corner. South Carolina just called a timeout. 24 seconds left. It's a seven point lead for South Carolina. All right. What do you expect here from NC State? 
I think South Carolina is going to expect them to throw the ball, but right. they have a timeout. So do you try to run it here on second and goal, or do you stick with what's worked? No, the answer has been through the air so far to this point, and the answer really, to get more specific, has been Jalen Samuels. He is your go-to guy. He's the leading receiver today. He's got a million targets, and he's a matchup nightmare. And in the red zone, if you can create a favorable matchup, that's where you want to end up. Now, South Carolina has adjusted. They've double-teamed him the last few snaps, but if he can break free and get one-on-one -on -one coverage, if I'm Ryan Finley, that's where I'm looking. Second and goal from the eight. Finley to the air. Now steps up and sacked. They got to use a timeout here. And Finley calls it. Bison, Allen Williams with the sack for South Carolina. So now they're out of timeouts. It's third and goal. They're three of three, though, on third down this drive. It's been a terrific opening Saturday game. It all started with a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Debo Samuel. He's got two other touchdowns in this game. Those two were receiving touchdowns, including a one-handed catch. Ryan Finley with a rushing touchdown. He had won all of last year. And then watch this play by Jake Bentley, eluding an All-American trying to get a sack and making a beautiful throw and the one-handed snare by Samuel. And then here's the last score that got NC State within seven. And now the Wolfpack face with a third and goal on the 10 with 19 seconds left. A ton of big plays in this game. I'll tell you, fellas, that timeout, not that one right there, but the one before the South Carolina called was critical. It actually created that sack. Here is why. They are gassed on the defensive front right now. They essentially, that play before, stood straight up, had no pass, pass rush whatsoever. Took the timeout, came back, put Bryce and Allen Williams, number four on the edge, and were able to create that sack. So right now, South Carolina is trying to stay, keep their breath about them for a couple of more downs. Yeah, 98 play that NC State has run here today. Can't take a sack if you're Finley. And Will Muschamp called the timeout right before the snap. Here's why, Dave. They've got Jemias Williams, 21, lined up on the corner by himself at the bottom of your screen versus number 12, Steph Lewis. It's about a five-inch height differential. That's why Will Muschamp was screaming down the sideline. That is not a matchup you want with 19 seconds to go. Exactly right, Tom. The entire defense on the motion shifted to the quarterback's right which left the true freshman and a star in the making in Jemias Williams. You said he's given up five inches. I see it more like seven inches to Steph Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as he saw it, Will Muschamp getting nudged by his defensive coordinator, Travaris Robinson, and trying to find the official as fast as humanly possible. And look at Luke's in good position. That's how he knew what Muschamp was yelling about because he heard the whole conversation. Well, no, I actually stood over here and I said to myself, oh, no. Oh, no. Well, that's what Muschamp said as well. He called the timeout. All right, third and goal on the 10. Again, no timeouts left for NC State. Look at Samuels there, trying to hide him in a bunch, top of your screen. The last piece shifts back into the backfield. Finley to the end zone, incomplete. Going for Kelvin Harmon. Jamarcus King was in coverage. Fourth down, NC State has to go. Just off the mark, but pretty good coverage right there by Jamarcus King. With this being a gotta have it, obviously, down 7.15 to go. You have to identify the best player on the field if you're the quarterback. And the best player is number one. He's been the guy all day long, even if he's double covered, find a route that can get him uncovered for the touchdown. Finley backing up, in trouble, moves to his right, now throws, end zone tip, incomplete! South Carolina takes over on downs with six seconds to go. DJ Smith got a piece of the ball.
lot of discussion in the offseason. Has the ACC surpassed the SEC? I don't know if we'll have the answer by the end of tonight. Florida State, Alabama, by the way, coming up later. But the SEC is going to win this one. Finley trying to find Jalen Samuels. You see his eyes start to the left and down the middle. Gets good pressure up front. Not a lot of options as you're rolling to the right-hand side. And a tremendous defensive play by South Carolina to secure the victory. What a win for Will Muschamp going into his second year. 35-28, the final score. South Carolina beats NC State for Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, and Dave Pash. On to Athens, Georgia, Appalachian State against the Bulldogs.